There are a lot of things we won't be able to forget. But mostly it's the unmistakable feeling that Monday night football is not just a game. You're looking live now at RFK Stadium, just moments away from the game between the New York Giants and the Washington Redskins, a sellout crowd on hand. Since 1970, our spotlight has been shining on the most unsuspecting and the deserving. Every Monday night has been a highlight, and we're ready to kick off our 20th anniversary season. So stay with us for the Giants and the Redskins on ABC's Monday Night Football. It means just a little bit more. 1937, the rivals in baseball were two teams from New York City. As Joe DiMaggio's New York Yankees defeated Carl Hubble's New York Giants in the World Series. The Redskins' arrival in Washington that year spawned another rivalry, this one with the New York football Giants. Rookie Sammy Ball led the Redskins to a season-opening victory over the Giants and the World Championship. 1962, Jack Nicklaus defeated rival Arnold Palmer in the U.S. Open playoff. Also that year, the 62nd meeting, the Skins and the Giants. Giants quarterback Y.A. Tittle, like Ball, future Hall of Famer, tied the NFL single-game record with seven touchdown passes en route to a 49-34 victory over the Redskins. 1966, Bill Russell and Wilt Chamberlain continue their big-man rivalry in basketball. And in the 71st meeting, the Redskins and Giants played a game that may never be matched. A total of 113 points is still the NFL record. In the 1970s, bitter rivals Joe Frazier and Muhammad Ali battled three times. And George Allen and quarterback Billy Kilmer arrived in 1971 and turned the Over the Hill gang into a winner. They led the Redskins to 11 straight victories over the Giants. 1988, the rivals of the Olympics were Ben Johnson and Carl Lewis, two men racing for one title. The 113th meeting in New York season opening victory over Washington, Giants nose guard Jim Burt returned to fumble 39 yards for a touchdown. It was the first touchdown of his career. And now in 1989, the 115th meeting, the bitter rivalry continues. Tonight, from RFK Stadium in Washington, two of the greatest rivals in sports follow in the footsteps of Baugh, Tittle, Jurgensen, and Kilmer in the season premiere of ABC's Monday Night Football, The Giants and the Redskins. Temperature about 87 degrees, but this is a turned-on city. They love their pro football Washington Redskins, the Capitol building. And RFK Stadium sold out as it always is. You'll hear a loud, raucous crowd tonight. They love the Washington Redskins in the 80s, three times in the Super Bowl. Hello again, everyone. I'm Frank Gifford, along with Al Michaels and Dan Deardorff. And you know guys watching that 20th anniversary special, and as we kick off our 20th anniversary season, I can't help but thinking of a line my colleague Don Meredith used to like to quote from The Grateful Dead. Lately, it occurs to me what a long, strange trip this has been. <laughs> and I think it's been just that. And you've been on the trip for 19 of those 20 years. How many frequent flyer miles have you piled up? Oh, you know, almost 300 Monday night games alone, and very few of them played in New York. And Travel Frank, City. as a junior member of this group, Al and Frank, you know, this series went on when I was still in college. I'm a fan. Then uh, 13 years in the league, I got to be both a fan and a player. And and now to be here in the booth, the, the 20 years have really encompassed my entire adult life. It's the only time Dan will ever be the junior member of anything. <laughs> Age-wise. Of course, I call Dan's first starting game for the St. Louis Cardinals on a Monday night back in 1971. We think we have a good opening for you tonight as we kick off our 20th anniversary season. The New York Giants were 10-6 and six last year, tied with Philadelphia, also at 10-6. and six, But they lost twice to Philadelphia, and they were out of the playoffs. Meanwhile, the Washington Redskins, they were 7-9, and nine, and that's the first losing season Joe Gibbs has had in eight years. They did not stand pat, however, Al. They made some changes, some major changes and big king-size changes. Well, they were 25th in the league in rushing, so they went out They got Gerald Riggs, also Ernest Biner. They'll be okay in that department. You know, this is a team with a lot of quality, but it's also an older team. They don't think they're too old, but it's almost the over-the-hill gang revisited. The Redskins have 14 different players who at one time or another in their careers have been to the Pro Bowl, by far the most of any team in the league. But I think the key to Washington's success this year, at quarterback. It'll be Mark Rippon. He's the fourth different quarterback to start in the last five opening days for the Washington Redskins, and tonight is only his seventh NFL start. He's got some great receivers. So that's the Washington story. What about the Giants, Dan? What do they have to do to win tonight? And we're not going to talk about trick plays or flea flickers or anything like that, Al. For the New York Giants, it's extremely simple. Bill Parcells feels whoever's big people beat up on the other team's big people, they're going to win tonight's game. And that is 
is really true. For the Giants, it's really quite simple. Can their two young tackles keep man and manly away from Phil Simms when they have the ball? And defensively, it's a new middle triangle in the center of the Giants' defense. Can they stop this very potent Washington Redskin running attack? It's basic football tonight. And for the 89 season, Al Michaels and Frank Gifford, let's get it on. Before another full house in Washington, Frank mentioned it's hot, it's very hot, and it's very humid. And through the weekend, the highs in the 90s, it's about 87 degrees at the moment. And Chip Miller will kick off as the Giants won the toss. And the Giants will receive RFK Stadium, where the Redskins are always tough to beat. And through the years on Monday night, Washington is 12 and 3 at home. 18 and 14 overall on Monday night. The Giants have had their problems on Monday. 6 15 and 1. And here we go with Meggett and Ingram back to receive for the Giants. This is Dave Meggett, the rookie from the five yard line, working his way out to the 20. Stopped by Kurt Govea. Phil Sims. Brittle early in his career and now pretty much of an Iron Man. The game of his life in the Super Bowl against Denver, 22 out of 25, and then he went straight to Disneyland and all of the endorsements. And the offense with Joe Morris injured. It's O.J. Anderson, the feature back. Carthen is the blocking back. Manuel and Turner, the wide outs. Bavaro, the tight end. And there might be the whole key to the Giants' success in 89. The revamp offensive line, and wouldn't you know it, one of the keys comes into play right off the start with Charles Mann and Doug Riesenberg and let's see who came across first. Dick well, Kantak will tell us. It was clearly Riesenberg falling down. Ball start, offense, number 72, five yard penalty, still first down. You can almost understand that, Dan, and now this game might even turn on the corners, if you will. Riesenberg against Charles Mann and John Elliott, the second year man out of Michigan against Dexter Manley. They've got to keep Manley and Mann off Sims back all night. First down and 15 from the 15-yard line. And this is Otis Anderson in his 11th season for a gain of 10, taking it to the 25-yard line where Todd Bowles, the free safety, makes the stop. Anderson, so many sparkling years with the Cardinals, traded to the Giants in 86. And the Washington defense, of course, the strength on the outside, the two ends, man and manly. Dave Butts has retired. Washington, the basic 3-4 with Neil Olkowitz in the middle and Wilbur Marshall came over from Chicago last year on the outside. Davis and Green in the corners, Bowles and Walt in the tight ends. Giants in a one-back set, second and five with the extra tight end Moat in motion and Anderson picks up a hard yard to set up a third and four. Charles Mann, 71, and Alvin Walton, 40, and on the tackle. And it's been a long time since Otis Anderson, O.J. Anderson. He says, I don't care what you call me. The O.J. comes from Otis Jerome, his given name. But it has been a long time since he's been the feature back in an offense in the National Football League. You really have to go all the way back to 1985 until he was a regular player with the then St. Louis Cardinals. Sims leads him to the line on third and a long four from the 26-yard line. Under a lot of pressure, down he goes. And that was a big problem with the Giants last year as well, giving up sacks. Monty Coleman records that one. Monty Coleman, they usually say, is their finest linebacker at covering the pass. That time, they used him on the blitz instead of dropping him back. And perhaps in the Giants' preview of all the games of the Redskins they did not suspect he was going to come but in he comes gets the sack and the Giants will have to punt. Frank this is strictly a case of there being too many Redskins uh, as far as Giants able to block them. That was a three linebacker blitz by Washington at that, that time and the Giants only kept in two back. High snap and Landetta goes up to get it and gets the kick away it's a high kick. Joe Howard back to field it at the 30-yard line. Escapes the first giant and the second, but not the third, as he runs it back to the 35. And Zeke Moat comes down the field to make the tackle. Steve Diossi with a high snap, but Landetta able to get it away. So here comes Mark Rippon out of Washington State. Picked sixth in the 86 draft. Spent two seasons on injured reserve. And last year, he was erratic, as he was in preseason this year. There are his numbers for nine NFL games and six starts. Riggs in the one-back set. Monk, Sanders, and Clark, the posse they're known as. The wideouts. Warren is the tight end and the veteran offensive line with Lachey moving from right tackle over to left tackle. 
This is Riggs. His first carry as a Redskin is an eight-yard gain out to the 43-yard line. Greg Jackson, the rookie safety, and Carl Banks converge on the tackle. Dan, it didn't take long to see where the Redskins are going to try to go. You mentioned that triangle has changed. The nose tackle, Eric Howard. Jim Burt usually started there last year. Johnny Cooks, Steve Diossi, linebackers on the inside. They are new starters for the Giants. The Redskins will test it. And right away, look at this. The Giants are switching Carl Banks and Lawrence Taylor. And the Redskins send Biner in motion on second and three. And this is Riggs fighting his way for a yard or two. Carl Banks making the tackle. One thing about Riggs at Atlanta, great career with some bad teams. He really finishes off the play. They were very conservative in how they handle Riggs in preseason. He's only 28 years old. He'll be 29 in November, but they let him carry the ball only 28 times. Now, he's used to carrying the ball 30, 35 times a game, and you just knew that Joe Gibbs was going to keep him healthy for the opening of the season. When I say finish off that play, he fights for that extra yardage, lunges, off times picks up that extra yard or two. And he'll look for that here as he seeks the first down, and he has it out to the 47-yard line. Leonard Marshall makes the tackle. Let's take a look right now at a Giants defense that has seen Riggs carry the ball on three successive plays. Jim Burt has retired. Eric Howard takes over in the middle. Harry Carson has retired. Pepper Johnson's a holdout. You've got Diossi and Cooks inside Banks and Taylor. Kenny Hill is gone. Collins and Williams, the corners, and Jackson, the rookie, with Kennard, the safeties. And now for the first time that I've seen in quite a while, the Giants are flipping their linebackers. Lawrence Taylor working to the weak side. Carl Banks moving to the strong side. And on first and 10 from the 47-yard line, Rippin going deep but too deep, and Clark was covered well on the play with Sheldon White. Good read by Rippin. He had the blitz on. Banks was coming, number 58. Lawrence Taylor, 56, was coming. And Clark had single coverage. Here it is again. And not bad coverage out there on the corner. And Sanders in motion. Deep drop. Rippin steps up, loses the football. Taylor knocked it out of his arm. And at the 47-yard line, the Redskins have it. So Taylor coming in from the outside, making his presence known immediately. Well, he's working against Donnie Warren, a tight end, who in this matchup is really outclassed. But some kind of effort by Lawrence Taylor, who has just had a tremendous... Preseason, watching from the left, leaving his feet and swatting the ball out of Mark Rippon's arms. Just a phenomenal effort by Lawrence Taylor. And that was ruled a fumble, and that's why it's back at the 47-yard line on fourth down. Ralph Moschenko, who came over from San Diego, is the punter, and his first kick as a Redskin is a low-line drive taken at the 10-yard line by Dave Meggett, who's very quick, but so is Gouveia. He made the tackle on the opening kickoff. And on the first punt as well. So Monday Night Football's 20th season underway at RFK. Anderson is the key man, and that's what the Giants will miss with Joe Morris. Broken bone in his foot out for the year in 85 and 86, uh, the second of those seasons, a Super Bowl year. Look at under average where Morris averaged four and a half yards a carry, but he has declined in the last two seasons to 3.5. The league average is exactly four. Looking back on that... And reflecting on it, Al, Bart Oates, the center, is the only remaining offensive lineman in that offensive line from their Super Bowl season of 86, and that makes a big difference for a running back. So the Giants, their second possession begins at the 19-yard line, and this is Carson, normally the blocking back, picking up six, fumble after he was down. The line judge is right there and says dead ball. Don Carlson there to call it. And just to, to clear up the last play with Taylor and Rippon, it was ruled a sack. Grasp and control and not a fumble. So Taylor picks up his first sack of the season. Grasp cool. and control. That's the grasp he had was the ball. Go talk to the official scorer. How do you rule that a sack? I don't know. Just had a, I mean, <laughs> quite a grip on his wrist. <laughs> right. I mean, obviously a fumble, but a sack. Grasp and control of the ball. Here's Anderson for a first down, fighting his way out to the 31-yard line. Actually, in the rule book, a quarterback fumbling behind the line of scrimmage in that circumstance while trying to pass is officially in the in the rule book a sack. Well, you can officially call it a sack, but <laughs> let's not use the phrase grasp and control at the same time. There's Dexter Manley being driven off the line by Mark Bavaro. 
who I think is the best blocking tight end maybe this game has seen in the last 20 years. That's a defensive end Bavaro taking on right there and effectively takes him three or four yards off the ball. And what did they say at the Giants? He's a man on a mission this year, coming back from an injury plague year last year. Not a bad receiver either. Big hole for Carson through the middle. And he's out to the 38-yard line. So it's it's funny with Carthen, he's a, a blocking back for the most part. He was there to help lead the way for Morris. Doesn't carry the ball all of that much, only about 40 times per season, as you can see. And doesn't figure to play that much this year in a, in a one-back offense. You know, back in 1983, when he was blocking for Herschel Walker with the Generals, he was a 1,000-yard rusher in a year that Walker was hurt. So he can carry it if you give it to him. On second and three, Anderson behind Carthen, and he gets dragged down from behind by Wilbur Marshall, who did not have a great year last year, and the company line around here was, well, he was just fitting into the Redskin scheme and couldn't shine the way he did in Chicago. Of course, he also had a knee problem last year, and there was knee surgery, arthroscopic surgery following the season. But I think his defensive schemes were probably a little more complex when he came here as to those he worked under in Chicago when it was pretty chronic and pretty hectic under Buddy Ryan. You know, Otis Anderson carried on third and one last year, I think a dozen times and picked up the first down every time. And he's off to that same kind of start this season as he takes it out to the 42. He was their short yardage specialist last season. In fact, scored eight touchdowns despite seeing limited action. That Bowles time, makes the tackle on the last play. That time Otis enjoyed a nice hole up the middle and a very deceiving runner. Mosey Tatupu is the oldest running back in the league at 34, but he's basically been a special teams player mm -hmm. his entire career. I remember Anderson when he came into the league as a rookie in 79. Fooled everyone, being as big as he was and possessing the speed he had. And this is Anderson looking for room to the outside. In fact, Dan, you were, you were there the day that he broke in as a rookie with a, a tremendous outing, and then uh, what happened to you the next week? Well, I think Otis opened up with 195 or 196 yards against the Dallas Cowboys, his very first game in the NFL. Our next game was at the Meadowlands in New York against the Giants, and I blow out my knee, and I miss the entire year. And then even behind a, a line that at times was very much patched together, he goes over 1,600 yards as a rookie. A sensational talent, Otis Anderson. Second and ten, the Giants have yet to pass, and here they go. Off the play fake. Sin sets up, has it intercepted by Walton at the 45-yard line. He's into Giant territory, and all the way down to the 35. And Sims getting into it, along with Marshall. This is just a very simple play by Alvin Walton who just sits in the center of the defense. The strong safety doesn't have a designed receiver. It's his own defense all the way. And he just plays center field. Watch Walton just drift back, sit right here, and Sims is going to lash it right to him. Can't help but recall as we look again at Sims' comments to us yesterday, they never play his own defense. They hardly ever show us a zone defense. The first time he goes up on top, he gets his own. He doesn't even see Walton, and the skins pick it off. Sims was trying to get the ball to Lionel Manuel, who was running a curl, but he's way short. And then after the play, we have a little skirmish. Phil Sims and Wilbur Marshall, Wilbur Sons' helmet. And I don't know that there's a scrappier quarterback in the league than Phil Sims. Wilbur looks like he's saying, well, he took my helmet. I'm going to try to pry his off with your head in it. Hey, Phil Sims will tell more than one defensive lineman where to put it. Tough kid. Especially when <laughs> that, that lineman is Son's helmet, as you say. For the 36-yard line, this is Riggs. For a gain of about eight, Greg Jackson, the rookie, comes up to make the tackle at the 27-yard line. And you know, it's tough not to call Sims a kid. What is he, 30 or 31 years old? He looks like he's about 18 and acts like it at times, <laughs> but he is a competitor. Good like hit there by Greg Jackson, the rookie from LSU that Bill Parcells was quite concerned about. He wasn't concerned about the hit ca ca capability of Greg Jackson, but he is filling in for an injured Aaron White, Adrian White. They'd like to be starting there, and a good show by the rookie from LSU. Sims, by the way, 32 years old, third oldest starting QB in the league behind Steve DeBerg and Joe Montana. Second and two, Riggs picks up the first down. 
And down he goes, but a fumble at the 20-yard line, and the Giants have it. Mark Collins picks up the fumble. Lawrence Taylor was the man who stripped it. And that's the Giants' ball. He wasn't down. And Lawrence Taylor, again, diving in from behind, is going to make the play exactly the way he stripped the ball away from Rippon. This time he's going to lunge through the air. Just watch him all the way and watch the effort of Lawrence Taylor as he leaves his feet right here and just hacks the ball out of the arms of Gerald Riggs. And he takes it away from a man who rarely fumbles. He went through one season carrying the ball over 300 times, did Riggs, without a fumble. The Giants get it on his first fumble of this game. 1985, 397 carries, plus 33 receptions without a fumble. And but you think Lawrence that, Taylor to face that oh, year? Do you think Lawrence Taylor is having an impact on this game? There is a sack and a fumble in the same play, and here he comes with his second cause fumble, catching Gerald Riggs from behind. So one sack, two forced fumbles, one of which the Giants recover. And the Giants from the 28-yard line start with a pass to Lee Rusan, who backs up Anderson now. He's the number two Running back is Neil Olkowitz, the veteran middle linebacker, makes the tackle. Roussan out of Colorado and figures to, to play not that much, just when Anderson needs a, a breather, as is the case here with four and a half minutes to go in the first period. Zeke Moat checked into the Giants' backfield. The other fine tight end used to be a starter before he was injured, and Bavaro became an all-pro. The Giants expected to use a two-tight end offense in their one single-back running game tonight. And two tight ends in right now on second down and five. And this is Rusan again, and he fights his way to the 40-yard line. He's pulled down from behind by the veteran Darrell Grant in his ninth year. And uh, we've got another skirmish, and Marshall's involved in this one as well. Well, Wilbur better get a new chin strap because he's lost his helmet again. This time with Moat on the other end. Now, Wilbur Marshall is having a serious chin strap problem here tonight. Once he loses it with a quarterback, and now he's having a helmet problem again. And another skirmish. Let's see if we can pick it up. That's John Elliott working against Dexter Manley. That's Zeke Moat, who's got the left hand way up on the chin of Wilbur Marshall. And Wilbur takes serious exception to that. And, hey, it's only a flick of the right hand by Moat that knocks Wilbur's helmet off. Wilbur Marshall. It's an easier game, Wilbur, with the hat on. <laughs> Typical Giants Redskins, however. So far on first down. Maurice Carthen picks up two. That's Wilbur Marshall making the tackle. And Bowles coming up as well from the secondary with three and a half minutes to go in a scoreless opening period. You know, one of the points about Otis Anderson is going to be his condition, Frank. You know, all training camp long, he prepares himself to be a backup. He knows that Joe Morris is the main guy, and it's not until just seven days ago that he finds out that he's going to have to be the number one back. You really have to wonder if he's in good enough shape to carry the ball 25 times a ball game. And it is hot and it is humid here tonight. Tough night to find out. Second and eight from the 42-yard line. Pressure from Manley from the backside, but Sims gets the pass off to Anderson, and he's wrestled down by Davis, who needs some help from Bowles. Oh, Dan, I know you've seen that many times with the Cardinals. He is strong, powerful, and you talked about can he get in shape to carry it that many times. For the past three years, he has not carried the football that often. What do you say, 40, 45 times in the last three years? So he really has not been worn down. We'll look at him again, and he shows the strength and just carries tacklers. Well, look at his legs. I mean, Otis Anderson carries a great deal of his weight from the waist on down, and he is a talented receiver. He had a 70-plus year in receptions with the Cardinals, so he's definitely got good hands. Shotgun third, call it a long four. They have to get to the Redskins side of the 50-yard line. The catch is made by Turner. Down the sideline, he goes, and he's finally stopped at the 30-yard line by Brian Davis. And there's a man, Odessa Turner, who had a terrific day against the Redskins here last year in the fifth week of the season, but wound up getting hurt and was out for the balance of the year. A year ago, he caught eight passes for over 100 yards before he hurt that knee, Al, and this was a set play. They knew that he was going to get one-on-one -on -one with Alvin Walton, and the Redskins don't want Walton on a one-on-one -on -one with an Odessa Turner, who is a great athlete, and they talk all pro when they talk about Odessa Turner. They're just waiting for it to happen. Yeah, Bill Parcells, who's normally very pessimistic before the season begins, worried about everything, just said yesterday flat out, Turner will be a superstar. Anderson hit by Manley behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of two. 
Boy, and there's Dexter Manley working against John Elliott, the left tackle, and that time John just a little too eager to take the outside away from Dexter Manley and watch Manley then slash back to the inside. Elliott going far too much to the outside trying to get position. Dexter feeling that hold to the inside, taking it and being in on the play, causing the play for a loss. John Elliott's been working all week with Carl Nelson. He used to start for the Giants and now works with them. Second down and 11 in the final minute of the opening period and Sims over the middle and it is caught by Turner for the touchdown. He takes it away from Darrell Green. Uh, and he actually had Darrell Green beaten more decisively than that. He was able to take it away, but Sims just almost underthrew that ball because Odessa Turner had given the Green just a little move and just blew right by him. And here's one of your better man-to-man -man defensive players. And Darrell Green thinks he has the interception. Watch how he gets a hand on the ball. Watch him move to the inside. And Darrell Green actually has the ball, and Turner wrestles it away from him. Boy, Darrell Green after that play was stalking the end zone. He could hardly believe that he had that taken away from him. Green is 5'8", Odessa Turner is 6'3". Raul Alegre, who missed much of last season, he was hurt. Boots it through. And Odessa Turner, who had a sensational day here last year before an injury, Sheldon, is off to that same kind of start tonight. And he's going to say, where are we playing next week? I'm going to come back <laughs> playing Washington. <laughs> Great effort. And Phil Sims puts the Giants on the scoreboard. He is enthusiastic. We'll be right back. Yep, beaten by Turner for the touchdown. You know, it was almost, uh, we looked at it again, almost like he was counting on that speed, let Odessa Turner get by him and just had the, he was there, just had the ball taken away from him. What a night, though, in the nation's capital. Raul Alegre puts it in the air. This is A.J. Johnson, rookie from Southwest Texas State, taking it from the two out to about the 24-yard line. Greg Jackson makes the tackle. Well, Monday Night Football beginning its 20th year. And back to college football on Saturday, and it doesn't get any better than that for an early season matchup. Number one, Notre Dame. Number two, Michigan. Ann Arbor is the site, 3.30 Eastern time. What Lou Holtz's book isn't selling, it's not because he's not out there pumping it. Mm -mm. I think some of the polls have Michigan number one and Notre Dame number two. Let's oh, say. yeah? <laughs> and then Monday night, we go to Buffalo with Dan, Denver against the Bills at 9 Eastern time. Some of the polls have the Bills, number one. <laughs> Big weekend for me. Oh, yeah. Hope you make it there. From the 24-yard line, here's Rippin. Throwing, and Clark makes the catch on his knees and is stopped by Sheldon White at the 40-yard line. Well, what the Redskins have to do now is start giving the ball to Gerald Riggs. Again, <laughs> Gary Clark <laughs> Just spinning Sheldon White one way, then the other. That's about as bad as, as a receiver can make a cornerback look, Frank. Oh, and you hate to go ahead and look at the tapes tomorrow oh. because they'll be chuckling, laughing. Bill Parcells won't be laughing, where will Bill Belichick, the defensive coordinator, but he'll get it from his teammates because he was really spun around like a top. One way and then the other, and there's the gun, the end of the first quarter. Mostly trench football, but the one bomb sends to Turner. That's the only scoring through the first 15. Giants lead it 7 to nothing, and we'll be back with Monday Night Football after this. Left. RFK Stadium, nearly a full moon on this 11th night of September. And it feels like the middle of summer, not the end of it. Temperature in the high 80s and very humid in Washington, and we begin the second period. 7 to nothing, the Giants on top. And Washington with the ball at the 41-yard line. Their own 41 is ripping retreats. Has time and drops it over the middle for Riggs, who has a first down as he takes it to the New York 46 yard line. Mark Rippon, very good with that touch for probably his longest suit. Rippon, the Travelers Man of the Year for the Washington Redskins. Of course, if you have followed over the past few years, every team has a player who performs well off the field in the community. And they announced the Travelers Man of the Year at the Super Bowl for the entire league. Rippon for the Redskins, however. In his seventh NFL start from the 46, here's Riggs again. And he can't turn the corner, and it gets bumped out of bounds by Collins and Jackson in a little skirmish afterward. No penalty. Well, there should be a penalty. That hit uh, occurred in bounds, and uh, that's, just, that's just good defense. 
You got the chance, come up and put a lick on someone as long as they're still in the field of play. Watch where Gerald Riggs is. And Greg Jackson comes up, and that hit really is right on the mm. sidelines. You can't expect a defensive back to choke his motor that fast and come to a stop. And Greg Jackson, a rookie, trying to catch the coach's eye. Of course, he's already done that, or he wouldn't be starting. Sanders in motion, second down and nine. Griffin protected well, hits Sanders at the 40-yard line, and he's dropped at the 41. Still about four yards short of the first down. Carl Banks coming off a subpar season making the tackle. Banks was being lionized for a couple of years, especially following the Super Bowl season. Everybody's saying Taylor gets all of the publicity, but what about Banks? But uh, he needs to come back last year, this season after an off year. There's one of the matchups we wanted to watch, Jim Lachey and Lawrence Taylor, and that's just good zone blocking on the left side of that line. Lachey and Russ Grimm handling the Giants line stunt rather easily. Third and five, that's Biner now behind Rippon. And Taylor's moved to the other side across from Jacoby. And all the Giants come across. And was it Mark May who moved first? Yes, it was. They can't act the ref. Ball start, offense, number 73, five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. Yeah, you can see that it's Mark May. He's right in here. Watch him just rock back out of there. Yep, that's a head start, and that brings the entire giant team offside. But notice Lawrence Taylor right there. They brought him over to the other side. Jim Lachey, clearly, of the two Redskin tackles. The tackle with the better feet, the quicker legs. Are we going to see Lawrence Taylor going against Joe Jacoby Moore tonight? Here he comes to the right side again. Sanders in motion. On third and eight, it's Sanders making the catch, but he's taken down at the 40-yard line. Perry Williams is there to stop him. And Washington will have to putt. And in Joe Jacoby's defense, Lawrence Taylor singled him out for a little action, and Jacoby buried Taylor that time. Took him all the way to the inside. The former All-Pro Joe Jacoby down about 25 pounds this year. Down to still over 300, but what a big man. But that time, Lawrence challenged him face-to-face, -face and he handled it. Said he quit eating pizza, and Domino's stock survived somehow. Mosienko lofts one, which is fair caught at the 8-yard line by the rookie Dave Meggett. And did Bill Parcells breathe a sigh of relief? The rookie... Had a tough start early in the year when he dropped four against New England, but he has turned into a fine return man. One from Houston, Texas, Captain Mark Finette at the control. <laughs> Greg Minuski, what's that saying for a, uh, a certain hairstylist? If we don't look good, you don't look good? A Colgate kid, too. Wow. I'll tell you that he didn't get it at Kenneth. <laughs> from the eight, Carthen to the 10 yard line. Picks up a couple. 12.50 to go. We're in the first half at RFK. Giants on top. 7 to nothing on opening night. Back of Phil Sims. Bill Parcells beginning his seventh season. Took the team to the Super Bowl following the 86 campaign. But the Giants have not been to the playoffs since. Had a terrible year in 87. And then last year, 10 and 6. Same record the Eagles compiled. Except Philadelphia through the tie-breaking procedure. Went to the playoffs, and the Giants blew a chance by losing to the Jets on the closing day of the year. On second and eight. Four-man rush. Sims protected well. Throws. Bavaro makes the catch. He got position on Monty Coleman to make his first catch of the season. And yeah, that is a Pro Bowl catch by Mark Bavaro. That ball not thrown well by Sims at all, and Bavaro made Sims look awfully good on it. Sims laid it back to the inside. Bavaro almost had to spin around to make the catch, but concentrates on. Now he's working against a real fine linebacker, Monty Coleman, on the coverage. But look, he has to turn completely around the ball thrown inside. Well, it's the same old story, though, Frank, with that underthrown pass, which is what that was. The advantage really goes to the receiver because he's the guy looking back at the quarterback. All the adjustment that time was made by Bavaro. Lionel Manuel is the man in motion, and Anderson slips by man, but then is stopped after a minimal gain by Neil Olkowitz. Redskins took a chance with Olkowitz <laughs> last week, putting him on waivers. He wasn't claimed. 
and back he came. Well, Dexter Manley almost took the handoff. I mean, Dexter Manley was so far into the Giants' backfield, totally unblocked, taking a big slice to the inside, he almost grabbed the ball from Sims. He's been known to make a big play or two. So quick, only about 255 pounds. Look, at this. Look how far into that backfield he is. He was right in between Sims and Anderson. You have to have somebody on him when you're running away from him, at least to make him go around an offensive man, or he'll catch it. Second and 10 with Moat in motion. Anderson, nice nifty cutback, out past the 30, a first down, and fights his way to the 38, where he's finally stopped by Todd Bowles, the safety. Talking about Manley, I know many of you read about his testimony, emotional testimony, before Congress last year. He admitted he was illiterate. And now learning to, to read and write and studying very hard. And, in fact, uh, there he is, a poster boy for literacy. Be a winner, learn to read and write. Yeah, what a gutsy thing he did to come out with it, though. And to think of all the other people in this country, we know the numbers now. It's terrifying. For Dexter Manley, who can be an idol to so many, to come out and say, look, I'm helping myself. You can help yourself. From the 37-yard line, inside handoff to Carthen, and he's wrapped up by Mann, among others. No gain. Under 10 minutes now to play in the first half. 7-0 New York. Charles Mann playing this year without an injury. He struggled, number 71, through all of last season. First a hip injury, then later on a foot injury, and here he works against the Giants' Doug Riesenberg, working well. Taking the inside position. Seeing where the ball is and using the swim move, getting back to the outside and making a play for absolutely no gain, if anything, about a foot loss. Second and 10 from the 38-yard line. Blitz. Sims unloads for Turner again. And Turner at the 28-yard line was out of bounds. He was very close. I believe he got his right foot inbounds, but then in trying to come down, Odessa Turner swings his left foot over, and it lands out of bounds. Clearly, good call. And Brian Davis is a starter now at the left cornerback for the Redskins, and Davis was the Redskin hmm. that Odessa Turner victimized last year. They do not respect him like a lot of other people around the league, Brian Davis. And the Giants, you knew we were going to get to him at some point tonight because Turner turned him every way but loose a year ago, and he had him beat then. Uh, was he in? Yeah, the right foot was in clearly, but the left foot out of bounds by a good 18 inches. Right. Have them both down. Third and 10, Sims out of the shotgun. Blitz from Coleman, and that opens up the middle, and the catch is made by Meggett, the rookie, and he takes off inside the 30, inside the 20, inside the 10, and a touchdown for Dave Meggett, the rookie out of Townsend State. Not a bad little burst of speed. He's dynamite quick. He's only 5'7", 180 pounder. Made the team as a return man, and they like him so much. Parcells told us we'd see him in on the pass offense. He was wide open over the middle. Eased in there. Phil Sims found him, picked him off, picked him out, and he just turned on the speed. Well, that's Megan right to the left of your screen. Watch him go right up into the middle. And the Redskins are back in the softest defense in the middle you're ever going to see. I think that was Alvin Walton that came up and missed the tackle. Leading tackler for the Redskins. Misses the tackle on Megan. He flies in. And he's one of the finest tacklers in the whole league, Frank. Alvin Walton, one of the surest tacklers you're going to find. Misses the pop on Megan. Allegre's extra point is good. Coleman blitzing on the play, and that helped to open up the middle as well. And the funny thing is, Coleman sharing time with Caldwell. Caldwell very good against the run. Coleman very good against the pass, but he was coming. It was Walden, and then just the burst of speed. It's not blazing speed, but he's quick enough to get out in front and to maintain it into the end zone. Been in the booth on a couple of occasions. I wonder if Bill knows we're going to move this package to Thursday night next year. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Gibbs in his ninth season, and Bill Parcells in his seventh. In what? terms of tenure with their current teams, uh, only Shula and Noel have been with their clubs longer than Gibbs. What did Gibbs tell us yesterday? We won't. We don't want to get into position we're playing where we're playing catch up. That's who usually loses these football games when you get behind and you have to play catch up. He they're also, not there yet, but they're getting close. He made a prophetic statement yesterday. A.J. Johnson fields the kick two yards deep, comes out past the 20. 
And to the 35-yard line, and there's a penalty marker down. Johnson, like Meggett, a rookie. Hand tack will give us the call on his coach's show yesterday on a local television uh, show. Joe Gibbs said he thought Meggett would play a big part in tonight's game, and he was very prophetic. He's going to play a big part in the Giants' future, one would suspect. Unbelievably quick. He's strong at 5'7 and at 180 pounds. Illegal block on the return, number 88, half the distance to the goal line. Will be first down. That's another rookie. 88 is Jimmy Johnson, who's made the team as a tight end. Rookie out of Howard University, located here in Washington. There's Johnson coming in from your right, and no question about that. He may throw his arms up in the air, but that was a block from behind. We'll be back right after this. Hey, tonight, next time we appear here, it will not be a short sleeve crowd in the booth. <laughs> November 20th, right, yeah. Denver? And the players are very lucky that the sun isn't shining, that this is a night game. Because if this would have been played during the day with this humidity, fatigue and conditioning would be a factor late in this ballgame. There's no doubt that a lot of players wouldn't make it. Dehydration set in. It's still hurting down there plenty. Oh, I'll guarantee you. Well, it happened in Philadelphia yesterday, in fact, in the, uh, the Eagles-Seattle game, which was played in 90-degree temperatures. Washington with the ball. The Giants are on top 14 to nothing, and Riffin starts in a hole after the penalty. Back at the five-yard line. Riffin with time, and over the middle to Gerald Riggs. That graphic came up before. I don't know if you, if you looked at it closely in terms of career receptions for Riggs, but the interesting thing is he's caught 180-some-odd passes in his career, but he has never scored a touchdown on a pass reception, and that would be an NFL record. And I'll also tell you where he's catching them. He's the checkoff man in the flat, little circle over the middle. Second down, about a yard and a half. And this is Riggs. No, sir. Banged down behind the line of scrimmage by Steve DeAssi, who came over in a trade in June with Dallas and filling a role in the inside. That was a good move by the Giants. Diossi never, ever did fit into the flex 4-3 of the Dallas Cowboys. They tried him in the middle, and we watched him there. He never really played that very well. They tried him on the outside, didn't handle that well. What he is is a hitter. He is a powerful hitter, good against the run, and the Giants moved him that inside linebacker position, and you see it right there. He's big, he's strong, and he will really unload on you. Of course, Gerald Riggs helped him out a great deal by coming to a complete stop. <laughs> he appeared to be mystified at the point of attack. Got out there and just came to a stop, and Diossi whapped him. On third down and two, it's Sanders breaking free. Sprints by Banks. Chased finally out of bounds near midfield by Perry Williams. Ricky Sanders. <laughs> I'll tell you, they have three great receivers. The three wide receivers, Monk and Ricky Sanders and... Just unbelievable. Gary Clark last year, over 200 receptions. They can get you back into a ball game so quickly. But look how close Taylor is to making this not work at all. He's almost into Rippon's face again. He tries that swipe move again. Lawrence and the most lethal weapon on the field tonight, his swinging right arm. Jamie Morris comes into the game. Joe's younger brother for Washington. The fake to Morris, and then Rippin on a roll. Hits the tight end, Don Warren, for a first down to the 34-yard line. He stopped by Kennard. The blocking tight end rarely catches the ball. Don Warren, big play. Well, you know what it is. It's just the play action off the old counter gap. When you run a play successfully, it sets up the pass. Watch the counter move this way, the two linemen pulling, and Warren just comes all the way across, and watch how open he is. But when you run a running play as successful as the old counter gap, it sets up the pass beautifully, and the Redskins run that play two or three times a ball game, and it seems every time they run it, someone's wide open. Okay. We've got an injured player, that player, that's Terry Kennard of the Giants, who's down off the field. He's on the far sideline, clear off the playing surface. And there is the rookie now, Myron Guyton, out of Eastern Kentucky, personally scouted by Parcells in the offseason and he'll be taking over when we come back timeout on the field 659 to go in the half giants by two touchdowns
These two teams met in a wild one back in 62. Y.A. Tittle threw seven touchdown passes that day, including this. This was number six. The number 16, Frank Gifford. Look at that man go as the Giants beat Washington 49 to 34. Mm, what a speedster. <laughs> what a player he is. <laughs> Look at him go. He's gone. <laughs> He's going all over. Forget it. 99 yards. And a head. <laughs> Get off my back. <laughs> I was exhausted. Uh, we played that one for Kathy Lee. <laughs> At the 34-yard line, first down for the Washington Redskins. The Giants now with two rookie safeties in the game, and Rippon tries to exploit it, actually going to the sideline to Clark, who's covered by Perry Williams, the corner. But he does figure to exploit the Giants deep now with Greg Jackson and Terry Kennard, two rookies in the secondary. And yet, now they're seeing what happens when you throw on first down. You go for the big play, and you don't get it. Now Mark Rippon and the Redskins facing a second and long. They've been successful running the football so far. And granted, it has to be a temptation, although Kennard now comes back into the mm -hmm. lineup. Guyton's out. I said Kennard, the rookie. I meant Myron Guyton, who had replaced him, the rookie, at least for one play, was in there. Now, Kennard was shaking up his back in second down and ten. Over the middle. Catch is made by Clark, and Sheldon White grabs him by the shirt and takes him down at the 30-yard line. Ooh, and Gary Clark had the right idea. He had Don Warren set up for a block, and at the last minute, Gary here decides to go back to the inside and not challenge the corner. Don Warren might have been able to throw a block, allowing Gary to get to the outside. Lawrence Taylor. May have something to say about this play, a <laughs> passing situation. I was just trying to find him down there, see how they utilize him. Here they he bring moves. him over the left side, the weak side. Moves over across from Joe Jacoby. Third down and seven. Here comes Taylor. Griffin with a roll and underthrows Biner, and it will be fourth down. And that's a poorly conceived blocking scheme that time by the Redskins, asking Mark May, the right guard, to come all the way out from inside and expect to put a hit on Lawrence Taylor. Jacoby stays inside. Here comes Mark May out, and he's in no position at all to try to keep Taylor away from Rippon. Again, it was Taylor who was disrupting it. Rippon got out of there, had to pull out of it, got the ball off, but couldn't get the completion, and the Redskins will have to settle for the field goal attempt. It's not often you'll see the Redskins get in that area of the field and pass it three times. 49-yard attempt by Low Miller, who was booming them before the game, but this one is off to the left. His career long, 46 yards, so that would have been by three his best ever. Low Miller does not succeed with 540 to play in the first half, and the Giants four-point underdogs tonight, up by 14. You know, we looked at that flashback, but, you know, you think back over the many years of the Redskins and the Giants, and the Giants won a couple last year. They won both last year, and yet it was the Redskins who beat the Philadelphia Eagles, the winners of their division twice last year. The Giants have played well down here. They've dominated physically. They've won five of seven, seven and ten of the last ten games played. Well, when you get the kind of leadership they're getting tonight from Lawrence Taylor, no wonder they play well. I don't know how he could do anything any better than he's done so far. From the 31-yard line, Carson runs into Charles Mann. And then he's finished off by Monty Coleman. Mann playing hurt much of last year. Painful hip injury, 100% healthy right now. Well, the Giants are trying to run a trap. William Roberts looks like he's kicking man to the outside. And Carthen acts like it was a play designed to go outside. There's a screw-up of some magnitude, Frank. Well, you saw Monty Coleman, number 51. He came on the blitz, got inside of a Carthen, saw him, and knew he couldn't cut it back inside, tried to take it out. Gets about a three-and-a-half-yard loss out of it. Second down and 13, New York from the 28. Manley came across the line as Anderson, with a flag down, gets to the 30-yard line. Stopped by Olkowitz, and there's Manley, and he's mad at himself. Offside. Dick can't attack the referee. Of course, the toughest decision he might have to make tonight would be if that crowd noise rule comes into effect. Offside, defense, number 72, five-yard penalty, repeat the down, second down. Well, with a second and long situation, Dexter's playing pass, 
all the way. Look how he's in that elongated stance and trying to beat the snap count. Just goes across the line, then can't get back and falls down. You think he was guessing with Phil Sims on you it? You better Dan. believe he was. He's playing pass all the way. So good snap call by Sims. Second and eight in the one back set with the extra tight end Moad in motion. Here and comes Sims everybody. Take. Down he goes. Daryl Grant, number 77, coming up from the inside, the veteran tackle, ninth year out of Rice. The Washington Redskins at time really changed things around defensively. This is Dexter Manley all the way out here. Charles Mann has moved into the center. This is normally Manley's position on the far side of the field. Charles Mann moves to the inside. Dexter Manley switches sides. And the Redskins giving a Giants a whole new look, confuse their blocking scheme, and thus the sack. And that's not Grant's role ordinarily in the Redskins' defense. You're so right, Dan. He usually is the stay-home man, play the run. Third and 16, and that's the rookie Meggett lining up next to Sims in the shotgun. And they send him over the middle. Sims buys some time and throws it away. And Monty Coleman glued himself to number 30, Dave Meggett. <laughs> Sims took a quick look, and he knew he couldn't go there, threw it away. And I'll tell you again, the Redskins do a variation of what they did before. This time, Manley stayed in his own position. But again, Charles Mann moves down over the center. Sean Landetta to punt. Joe Howard, who was waived by Buffalo, in fact, waived even by Washington, and then brought back, stands at his 32-yard line, calls for the fair catch. He moves up to the 36 to make it there. And Washington... We'll start from that spot, 3.51 remaining in the half. Well, at halftime, a special feature coming your way this year, Monday Night Football's Greatest Moments. And tonight we're going to take a look at some of the great runs in the history of this package. And you all know about Neon Deion Sanders. Started the week with the New York Yankees and ends the week with the Atlanta Falcons and went all the way on a punt return yesterday. You know, Jim Thorpe did the same thing. He had a couple home runs for Cincinnati back in 1919. And he scored the same weekend three touchdowns for the Canton Bulldogs. Courtesy of Bob Wheeler. Wrote the book on Jim Thorpe. So Neon, Dion will light it up at halftime for us as Rippin throws over the middle to the safety valve. That's Don Warren, makes his second catch of the half. Out to the 43 yard line, gain of about six. Carl Banks on the coverage. Clock ticking down in the first half at RFK. Rippin looking over to Humphreys on the sidelines. Humphreys getting the play from Joe Gibbs, signaling those plays into Rippin, and this will be the result. Second and three. Four wide receivers in this set for the skins. And they keep it on the ground. And this is Riggs who fights his way to the 50-yard line. Eric Dorsey stops him at midfield. Redskins, by the way, with a streak going tonight, and it's the longest such streak in the league. They've scored at least one touchdown in 50 consecutive games, which is the equivalent of a little bit more than three seasons. We would certainly hope that that streak is not in jeopardy tonight. Hmm. You wouldn't think. At the 50, first and 10, Washington. Sanders moving. Griffin with a deep drop and then fires over the middle and it's Monk at the 33-yard line. And they found Sheldon White again. It was Monk against White, man for man coverage, and Rippin drilled it in. And credit that to great pass protection up front. Both Banks and Taylor are coming. Diossi even up by the line of scrimmage. Gary Clark making the catch. And Gary Clark, the recipient of a wide open passing lane that Mark Rippon had. And Gary Clark, as good a receiver as we've seen in a long time, at going low and digging up a ball. Granted, he's low to start with at only 5'9". And you know, one of the things that I really admire about the Redskin receivers is all three of these guys, Monk, Sanders, and Clark, have this ability to go across the middle and catch in the middle. There are a lot of receivers that are sideline guys. They run to like they like to run that fly, but they don't like to get hit. And all I think of when I see Monk, Sanders, and Clark is their receiver coach.
Charlie Taylor. Maybe the greatest inside receiver that ever played the game. And like Muck, a former running back, but all these receivers, and you're so right, Dan, it takes a little bit of not only concentration, but a little bit of heart to, to bring it across the middle end. Riggo, John Riggo. Riggins, who Matt had, he had his best years at what, age 34 and 35? Yep. Under Gibbs here in the uh, mid 80s, early to mid 80s. Didn't we all? <laughs> First and 10. <laughs> The catch is made by Clark, and Clark takes it to the 13-yard line, a first down. Washington had called a timeout to stop the clock at the 2.20 mark, so they're down to two timeouts remaining. They'll get a free timeout here as we come up to the two-minute warning. Big night again for Gary Clark, who's had several against the Giants, including 11 catches in a Monday night game back in 86. They found... Sheldon White once again, and Joe Gibbs has a wonderful way of isolating people that he wants to work against. But what Sheldon White, bizarre technique, turning his back on the receiver. That's not going to work. Missions will be held next week. If you think you'd like to do this for a living, Lawrence Taylor and Jim Lachey. It's a game of leverage. Lachey makes a mistake with the left hand, gets it up on the face mask. He's not really holding with it. You can see he gets it off, but... Superb job of pass protection by the All-Pro from Ohio State, Jim Lachey. Not a fun night staring at that man all evening. Two minutes to go in the half. Washington first and 10 at the 17, and the Skins have two timeouts. Riggs through the middle to the 11-yard line. Jack Kent Cook. In his 70s, the owner of the Washington Redskins, formerly the owner of the Los Angeles Lakers and the L.A. Kings of the National Hockey League, built the form in Inglewood. And he's seen his team win two Super Bowl championships. And a man who has a very difficult decision to come up with this week, uh, Doug Williams, his injured quarterback, kind of caught in no man's land, hurt jogging on his treadmill during the offseason. And... Technically, the Redskins don't have to honor Doug's con contract because he wasn't hurt after training camp started. And Mr. Cook is going to have a very difficult decision this week on what to do. There was a report today in one column I read that said that Washington had already made the decision. That is totally false. Cook, in fact, soliciting opinions from other people in terms of the situation as to whether or not he will pay Williams in full or seek to reach a settlement or just what. But Williams who underwent surgery, thinks he can come back in mid-year. Technically, Doug Williams is classified as a non-football injury. He doesn't count on their roster. He's really in no man's land. Second and four after Washington had called that last time out, so they have one left, and Rippon hits Monk. That's Art's first catch, and he fights for the first down. Art Monk on the far side. And Monk is able to not only pick up the first down, but get out of bounds. And if out of the corner of your eye, you happen to be watching what's happening between Jim Lachey and Lawrence Taylor, you're seeing it as good as it gets. Taylor's going to try the big inside spin. Look at Lachey react back to the inside. I mean, just, just outstanding work between these two all-pro players. I can't help but think what you talked about in the Minnesota game we saw the Redskins when Jacoby moved over to the right side. Lachey... Much more adds to the left side. That's where you get the strong pass rush. Brilliant move by Joe Bugle. First and goal, and there's Taylor again. Got another piece of that one. But that time he comes from the other side and beats Joe Jacoby. And frankly, uh, Lawrence Taylor, I'm sure, is going to say, hey, Jim Lachey, I think you're a great player, but I'm taking my show to the other side of the line. This is kind of what we were talking about a moment ago. Jacoby was over in the left side before he got hurt last year, moved over to the right side, and when Lachey moved over to the left side where he is much more active, much more agile. You just saw Jacoby having the problems of getting Taylor. Well, Joe Jacoby is an outstanding football player, but he is not going to beat, and that's Joe Bugle, the assistant head coach, he is not going to beat Lawrence Taylor to the corner to cut him off. Very few people can do it. Here he comes again. Second and goal from the six-yard line. He is picked up this oh. time. Down he goes, gets back up, and the throw is dropped by Biner. Ernest Biner coming over from Cleveland. At the goal line. Mark May that time unloaded on Lawrence Taylor. And, you know, I don't know when I've ever seen a player dominate such a game that the crowd even watched oh. that block. Well, I think it's you Biner. Him, I think Ernest Biner is the guy that gets the big hit. Watch Biner there, 21. He puts the shoulder on LT and knocks him sideways. May cleans up and puts him back down. But at the moment of contact, this crowd moves. Well, he's... 
tells you about the celebrity of uh, Lawrence Taylor. Mm. Well, every 56 in the league only borrows it from Lawrence Taylor. He's the real thing, the one and only. Skin squander six, at least temporarily. Third and goal, and Monk gets wrapped up by Banks. Screams for a penalty flag, but we see none. Yet. Yet. <laughs> and I'm sure you saw once again how close Lawrence Taylor was on that. Monk can't believe it. Well, it is close. Young quarterback, he's got to be getting a little bit jumpy when he knows that Taylor's coming from the blind side. Let's watch this right here. You can see the right hand is clearly around the waist of Art Monk. Now, you can put the hand on the back as long as the official doesn't feel that you're moving through the player. Here's Low Miller with a 24-yard field goal that is good after he'd earlier missed one from 49. Crowd very upset with the officials. Wanted the call, which they didn't get. Biner drops a pass. They don't get a call. They settle for three, and they're on the board down by 11. Well, Carl Banks does have the right hand wrapped around the back of Art Monk and pulls him down. He gets away with it, plain and simple. That could have easily been a flag, but credit Banks. That's an all-pro play. He got away with it. Good drive to have to settle for three points just before the half. Beautiful, beautiful football sound. They love it, don't they? Yep. Giants are up by 11 as Low Miller sends one very deep into the end zone, and Dave Meggett will kneel down there, and New York will take over at the 20 with 1.28 to go in the half, and the Giants have all of their timeouts. Next Monday, we shuffle off to Buffalo, where the Bills, coming off that stirring last-second victory on Jim Kelly's touchdown run yesterday against Miami, will be hosting the Denver Broncos, who started their year yesterday with a couple of interception returns for touchdowns and route to a 34-20 win over Kansas City. 9 Eastern next Monday night. I'm wearing my parka. How about you, Dan? <laughs> oh, Dan, Dan has left the building. Yeah. <laughs> Dan, we'll see you in week three in I, Cincinnati. I had to. <laughs> From the 20. I'm going to be there tomorrow. <laughs> Here's Carson. You might want to rethink that, Frank. <laughs> Dan, don't compound it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Frankie, Frankie, Frankie. <laughs> well, the Giants with their 14 to 3 lead are more than content to let this run out. You could see that's what was going to happen when Bill Parcell sends Carthen and Anderson mm -hmm. his two back set out onto the field. And he 11 point lead not a bad idea just you're deep down there don't well hang he, on to that football and that's what Sims will tell him. He also knows the Redskins only have one timeout left so they can't mm -hmm. force the issue. Second and nine from the 21, and now he elects to go deep to try to fool him on second and one. Yeah, but and he Ingram is double covered. That didn't, didn't fool anybody. He did not try to force it in there either. Oh, it's pretty tough to make something happen with a one receiver pattern. That's, this isn't little league ball. This guy's team isn't biting on that one. 41 seconds remaining now in the first half. So now if the Giants uh, try to to run the ball and Washington's able to stop them. It'll be Washington calling a timeout. Yeah, they'll at least force the punt mm -hmm. and hope they get a big return that moves them into scoring territory. That was a risky pass mm -hmm. for the Giants. When you think about it, sure, a third down and nine. A very risky pass. They have to get to the 30-yard line and they send Carson through the middle and he gets only to the 26 and now the Skins can stop the clock, which they do. They take their final timeout with 35 seconds and they will get the ball back. Well, if if something should happen here that Washington somehow gets a chance at a field goal, Bill Parcells is really going to kick himself. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was in the position to dictate exactly what would happen at the end of the first half. And by putting the ball up in the air and suffering the incompletion, it's no longer in his control. A lot of bad things can happen. You could block a punt, even though Sean is, is pretty good about getting it off. That's exactly what Parcells and Sims were talking about. Shaking their heads is Joe Howard. You think Sims audible to that? Uh, New special teams coach Wayne Severe of the Redskins has been brought back just to make 
Up Dayton. Get a little more out of the special teams of the Redskins. They really hurt them last year, especially in the opener that we had on Monday night at the Meadowlands where a, a one-hop snap cost them a touchdown, a key touchdown on a punt. Here's Landetta now. Setting up at his own 11-yard line. Perfect snap by Diashi this time. Oh, and a, what a booming kick. Wow. kick to the 20-yard line. This is Howard out to the 34-yard line with 24 seconds. And the punt all the way down to the 20-yard line travels 54 yards. That's Sims' reaction after the second down pass that really didn't have a prayer of being caught. I don't know if he's mad at himself for the way he threw it. I, he couldn't throw it any differently. It was covered so totally by the Redskins. He might not have been happy with the call and maybe even unhappy with himself for not changing it. Well, take it up with the guy with the gray hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or silver hair, as Bill yeah. likes to say. You get two words out of him, get lost. <laughs> with a couple of adjectives on either end. <laughs> I'll coach, you play. Mm. Washington, no timeouts. From the 33-yard line to the sideline, it's picked off by White. Sheldon White runs parallel alongside the 40 and is stopped at the 34-yard line. And now the Giants have it with 12 seconds remaining in the first half. Well, I'm told, I'm sure that Joe Gibbs told Rippon the one thing you don't want to do is throw that up and get it intercepted. Throw it away if you have to. Don't turn it over down here in your own territory. And he is upset. Oh, what a difficult pass into a zone defense. The Reds, the uh, Giants just. Sitting back in that soft zone, there's Sheldon White just sitting there. He really doesn't have to make much of a play at all. Bad and pass, is that Lawrence Dan, Taylor? That is Lawrence field? Taylor. Get a shot of Taylor when we end this replay in the end zone right now, getting some assistance, and there he is being assisted back to the locker room. Now, Lawrence Taylor, at the end of warm-ups, had to go in early to have his foot retaped. He's got a sore foot. It's been bothering him all preseason. I bet he's exhausted. Meanwhile, they give it out of the shotgun to Meggett to get down to the 25 and take a timeout and set it up for Allegra. Lawrence has been on a wind sprint on every pass play tonight. 87 degrees, high humidity, and he probably knows the defense is not going back out onto the field. He's going to get a jump on it. You talk about a coach having a great deal of respect for a player. How about in that situation, the last play of the first half leading up to the field goal, Bill Parcells elects to give the ball to Meggett a rookie. Mm -hmm. Now that's a gutsy call. I might have been tempted to hand it over to the veteran running back who knows and has had a great deal more experience in protecting the ball. Gutsy call mm -hmm. by Bill Parcell. And keeping in mind too that when Dave Meggett played his first game for the Giants this year in preseason, he bobbled the ball on practically every time he handled it and just scared the life out of Parcells who knew that he had a real talent in Dave Meggett. But when the talent can also beat you, you Got to be a little conservative about it. He thinks that much of him, I'm sure, at this point. And Meggett does the job, sets it up on the right hash mark, which is where he wanted to put it. As we get set for Allegra's 42-yard field goal attempt. Snap is good, so is the placement, but the kick is not. Mark Rippon breathed a sigh of relief. Sure did. And there's still a second left on the clock. And one play for the Redskins. And Raul Allegre really getting the big hook on the ball. Can we say again, hang around at halftime, and if you want to, vote on the best running play we've had on, as we celebrate our 20th anniversary. Uh, it was fun going back and looking at all the plays over the years. We picked out some that we feel are the best. Give you an opportunity to vote. Probably raise the roof because you probably remember some that were better. Well, and if you start thinking of all the great running backs and these running plays, there's one guy in there that you might not think of right off the top of your head. So oh, true. <laughs> well, with three receivers all set to the right, it has the makings of one of the Hail Marys to end the half. And here we go. And it's just a flutter ball. And Diasi's all the way back there. And in the middle of that pile, it's complete. It's caught by Sanders. And that'll end the half. But it will sure look good on the stat sheet. It oh, really helps your average gain per reception. They'll never know at the end of the year, will they? 45 yards. <laughs> Ricky says, thank you very much. It'll help out in contract negotiations. Good half at RFK.
Giants lead by 11. Back we come after this commercial. A message from the National Football League and a word from... We're at halftime at a sold-out RFK Stadium in the nation's capital as we kick off our 20th anniversary season with the New York Giants and the Washington Redskins. You know, we're proud to introduce a new halftime feature for this 20th anniversary season. Over the years, there have been some great plays and players, and we want to give you, our fans, the ability to vote for your choice for the best performances in our 20-year history. That should be a lot of fun, as each week, we're going to show highlights of our nominees for the top contenders in different categories. There'll be running, passing, etc. And you'll be able to phone in your choice. Later in the game, we'll tell you who's winning. Now, after watching the highlights, we'll give you a 900 phone number to call. So be sure to have a pencil and paper ready. This week, we're going to be taking a look at outstanding rushing plays, and we have some truly great ones. Our first nominee is O.J. Simpson, the dominant running back in the NFL through most of the 70s. This 59-yard run against Cincinnati in 1975 combined O.J.'s speed, grace, and agility. O.J. Simpson gets the call. Well, look out. That's it's what they got to go. Just about right this off. Oh, and down goes Simpson at the 23. He gets up again. What a football player. Why? The Cincinnati fans are all on their feet. They're seeing O.J. Simpson at his very best. In 1978, Earl Campbell burst upon the NFL scene and led the league in rushing as a rookie. This 81-yard run against Miami that November was the longest of his NFL career. Second and eight. Campbell. Outruns everyone to the right. Look out. He's gone. He makes it all the way. Puts his head down. 80-yard touchdown. This is over. What a show this man has put on tonight. You've seen tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is a truly great football player. In 1987, we watched another rookie, this one named Bo Jackson. He ran for a Monday night record 221 yards at Seattle, including this memorable 91 yarder. And Bo Jackson to the 20 and out in front, and only one man to beat. Okay. He may not stop yep. the coma. <laughs> He's gone. Portland. <laughs> He's just been by Spokane. There go the Raiders into five. <laughs> what a scene. Next, we have the NFL record that can never be broken. Tony Dorsett's 99-yard run on January 3rd, 1983. And remember, due to a mix-up in assignments, the Cowboys had only 10 men on the field. Big opening for Tony Dorsett. Look out. He's oh, got great no. speed. 99 yards and a half. Dorsett down the sideline. Stays in bounds. Can you believe that? And and short because they're 99 yards. Short yardage defense all bunched up. And that's, that's the 99 and a half yard run, I think, is the longest run in the history of the league. It is. And suddenly the whole momentum changes. Finally, the largest running back any of us had ever seen scored his first NFL touchdown in a game against the Packers in 1985. In one memorable evening, William Perry became a very big story. Perry is in the offensive backfield for the Bears. He'll be the lead blocker. They give him the football and Perry. <laughs> touchdown. Uh, William Perry fights the football. <laughs> and this crowd loves it. They've been reading about this all week long. <laughs> okay, now to enter your boat, just call 1-900-339-1ABC. Your call will cost just 95 cents, and a portion of each call will be donated to the United Way. If you get a busy signal, keep trying, but don't worry. Our lines will be open throughout the game and all week to take your call. One of them let everyone know he is truly ready for prime time. You've heard a lot about him. Right now, he's with Lynn Swan. Let's join Lynn Swan. Yesterday marked the debut of prime time. No, not the ABC News show, but Dion Sanders, AKA prime time Neon Dion, because he loves to be in the spotlight. 
just last Tuesday. As a member of the Yankees, he hit a home run. Then the next day, said goodbye to his teammates in the middle of the game and signed a four-year, $4.4 million contract with the Atlanta Falcons. Then after only two days of practice, he lit up Atlanta. He returned this punt 68 yards for a touchdown, becoming the first person ever to hit a major league home run and then score an NFL touchdown in the same week. Dan, we know how hard it is to hit home runs and score touchdowns, but do you really sense the history that you just made? Well, it really haven't set in just yet. You know, last night I took a flight back to Fort Myers to pick up a car, and I was just sitting on the plane saying, man, Dion, do you know what you've done? You know, you you excited those people. You've done everything you wanted to do, but it still haven't really kicked in yet. And the season hasn't really begun yet. Right. Now, you've talked about playing football and baseball, but I've heard there's something in your contract that makes football the number one priority. How are you going to work them both in? Football is my number one priority, and I'm 100% football, and I plan to put everything into football. Next spring, spring training, I will definitely be with the New York Yankees and try to fulfill every need that is written in that contract. But as far as one as the other, I just take one at a time right now. Dion, you, you're known for a lot of flash and dash. You've got money now. People are going to come at you from all different directions. Uh, you're very vocal. You even got a guy coming out of the woodworks to file a civil suit over something happened last December. How are you going to handle all this pressure? It's not really going to be tough. People make more out of things than they really are. But one thing, Deion Sanders, he has a great relationship with the Lord. And I feel like the Lord can get me through anything. Who is the real Dion? Is he the guy we hear with the flash and dash, or is he the quiet, soft-spoken guy I'm talking to now? Well, he's, he's just like James Brown. He's real. He's real. What do you anticipate? coming in the second game. You've already accomplished so much in this first game. You're going to be in that secondary. What do you anticipate from the opponents? Well, I'm sure they're going to come at me because I'm a rookie and I haven't played in the secondary at all. So uh, they're going to come at me. I just hope to contribute just as I've done last week. Well, Bo Jackson says, just do it. Maybe Deion Sanders is going to say, just watch it. You know it. Good luck to you. <laughs> okay. Eagles, Frank Gifford, Dan Deardorff will start the second half, and we saw Lawrence Taylor assisted to the dressing room just prior to the end of the first half, but back he comes to the sidelines as we get set to start the third quarter. And at the end of the first half, we saw him go off, and we looked at the play closely, and our guess is from up here that Lawrence Taylor is just totally exhausted. And he was dehydrated. The report we now get is Allegri kicks off, and A.J. Johnson brings it back from the 2 to the 24. And the other report we get is that they gave him two liters of fluid at halftime for the dehydration. And here's his last play of the half. And watch him just stop working against Jim Lachey. Lachey handles him. And Lawrence right here is just going to spin and say, that's it. I am checking out. And I'll tell you what's happening to him. He's delirious. When you lose that much fluid... You can see that, that Sheldon White is returning the ball and Lawrence Taylor clear on the opposite side of the field. And I've had that done before. You get it intravenously and the effect is immediate. You feel of just a thousand percent better. From the 24-yard line, it is Riggs exploiting a hole through the middle, taking it out to the 41. And the second half begins with the first down. He stopped by Terry Kennard. And again, just to follow up on Taylor, if you joined us late, temperature at game time in the high 80s. Right now it's cooled off to about 80 degrees. Gibbs going right back to what he wanted to do, I'm sure, before this game. Exploit the middle of that Giants line where there are three new players. Eric Howard, the nose tackle. Steve DiAsi, one inside linebacker, and Johnny Cooks. Got a big gain around it, but they held up during the first half, but Gibbs is going to, I'm sure, keep plugging away at it. Riggs has now gained 61 yards. That's Biner in motion, and here's Riggs again, and this time he picks up just uh, one. On the ugly coach, that, that play right there was way up there. <laughs> yeah. A couple of the Ritzkin offensive linemen ran into one another. A uh, kind of a mess. And call it no gain, second and ten. Riggs has carried 12 times for a total of 61 yards. That Passing. play deserved to be a no gain. Hmm. Passing situation will be interesting to see how they use Lawrence Taylor. Whether they're a little careful about blitzing him because that's just a full wind spread. He's at the top of your screen, standing up, right, number 56. And on second and 10, they give it to Riggs, and he fights his way out to the 46-yard line, setting up 
a third and five. It's Greg Cox, plan B free agent, came over from the 49ers making the tackle. And if you saw the adjustment they made there, what they did is they brought Cox from the outside on the blitz and dropped Lawrence Taylor off. So the Giants, who like to blitz Taylor every time, are now making a subtle adjustment. And this is a semi-breather for Taylor. Watch him bail out, and from your right, you'll see Cox coming on the blitz from the outside. Dan, you know they can't keep sending him like they did the first half. It's a very warm, humid night. And it's not only the wind sprint that he's on on every play, but when he's fighting somebody like Lachey, it's really totally exhausting. Well, I think about moving him. Third down and five. Clark in motion. Griffin has time, and Griffin's throw is batted down. White is there with Sanders. Sheldon White. Oh, and did White do a good job on Sanders that time? They've been going to White every time they can isolate him and localize him. Griffin looks up. He read it was man for man. White on Sanders, and good job by Sheldon White to stay with Sanders. Well, it was a good job coverage-wise, but Sheldon White should have intercepted that pass. That ball hit him right between the numbers on the shoulders. After we watched what happened the first Whoa. half, Dan, he was just surprised to be there. That should have been an interception all the way. Rippin very careless. We saw the rookie Meggett back to receive Moschenko's kick. End over end, line drive from the 15. And it's Meggett who tossed it up at the 30-yard line. And nothing but Redskins initially are there. And finally are there as well. That's Ben Bill Parcells fears. He's talked about it very openly. Ever since the first preseason game. I think Kurt Gouveia, we're going to find out, is the guy that puts a shot on him. Watch for number 54, Kurt Gouveia, on the return. I think he's the guy that really puts a shoulder on Megan. Now, this is the way you return a punt. You take it up the middle. None of this head for the sideline stuff. Watch the right. Watch from the right. There's Gouveia, 54. Boy, that's a big-time hit. There's a prime-time shot. Make it 5'7", 180, and you saw the impact of that. He had the ball covered up. He just about lost his head. And Moschenko, who was the punter, recovers it as Washington has it with Biner in motion at the 36, and Riggs swings to the outside and gets ridden out of bounds by Terry Kennard. Megat, well, I tell you, he has he seen both ends of the spectrum tonight. The 62-yard reception over the middle for the touchdown. And now, Washington with a golden chance to get right back in it because of the fumble. Frank, your point about Megat, though, is a good one. You, you can't take a guy over and chew him out after that. That's the kind of a shot that dislodges the ball from just about anybody. And you like that aggressiveness in returning a punch straight up the middle. That's the kind we'll take it all the way someday. Keeping the long axes of your body perpendicular to the goal line. Second and nine. Riggs again through the middle. And not much is there originally, but uh, he gets inside the 30 to the 28. And we discussed in the first half the way Riggs finishes off plays, something that a lot of people don't know. Because here's a guy who has played in relative anonymity all of those seasons in Atlanta, meaning he's not on national television very often. He has not played behind an offensive line like this either. What a joy. We talked with him at Link, one of our preseason games out in Minnesota. He is delighted to be here and look up and see the big haunches of Joe Jacoby on one side, Lachey on the other side. He comes out in a third down situation with Sanders in motion. Finer is the setback. Flag is thrown. Catch is made by Sanders, and that's a first down, but let's see about the penalty call. The Redskins have made an adjustment on their offensive line. Russ Grimm is out, and Raleigh McKenzie is in. Russ Grimm's over on the bench being looked at by three or four of the Redskins training personnel. Procedure call against the Redskins will bring this back, but Raleigh McKenzie, a part-time starter, is in there, so really not a huge drop-off talent-wise for Washington. Yeah, but Dan Grimm is the real leader of that offensive line. They, they'll be Illegal hurt by his loss. Offense only had six men on the line of scrimmage. Repeat third down. A good look at pass blocking from somewhat of a different angle right down the line of scrimmage. And one thing to keep in mind as this evening wears on, it is less fatiguing to pass protect than it is to pass rush. The pass rushers are the guys, and there we see Russ Grimm, but the pass rushers are the guys that expend more energy in driving upfield than are the guys who are absorbing it and trying to steer them by. And generally, they're also smaller. Here comes Taylor and Jacoby, near side. Third down and eight. With Sanders in motion, and the Giants jump. There's a flag down, and 
It's ripping down at the 48-yard line, and it could have been Taylor. He tried to time it out and just jumped it by a hair. Yeah, he's clear across the line, and Eric Dorsey, the, the defensive end of that side, moves as well. It'll be one or the other. They both were across. Offside, defense, number 56, repeat the down, third down. You see Dorsey and Taylor moving at exactly the same time. They're both across the line of scrimmage. And once again, that's a sign of fatigue. And, you know, people are going to say, now, wait a minute, here's a guy who makes a million dollars a year. Shouldn't he be in shape? I don't know that many of us could put out the effort that he gave in the first mm -hmm. half of this ball game and not be a little tucker. Interesting look now at the Redskins offense. Third down, long three and a half yards. You've got to rigs. That's what you got it for to keep your drives alive. Last year, they had to go to the air. Sanders is the man in motion. Rolling to the left, and Monk makes the catch at the 10-yard line. Oh, that was spectacular. And as he's done so often in a spectacular career, it's Art Monk with a clutch reception on third down and three. And very poor coverage, Frank, by the Giants. Their secondary playing very soft, and look how wide open Art Monk is. Again, a splendid effort and just an unbelievable catch by Monk. But look at that. Not even a giant in the picture. And Belichick talking to Greg Cox. I think he's saying, where were you? I think Cox was perhaps the nearest giant there. Belichick was checking out why he wasn't a little closer for sure. But what a great catch. Total concentration. Anyone, a lot of other players that have dropped that football, I can assure you that. It's first and goal. And Riggs fumbles ah. the football. There is Grimm at the bottom of the pile, but he doesn't come up with it. And it is. Well, nobody's signaled yet, yep, but the, the Giants there it is. have it. The Giants have it. Jackson came out of the pile with it. The rookie from LSU. Well, that's twice now that the Redskins have been in scoring position. Once in the first quarter, and now here again in the third quarter. And Gerald Riggs both times has fumbled the football. Take a look at it again. Riggs is not a fumbler. We've talked about that. And ripping it out of there and knocking it out of there is Steve Diossi. And guess who else was wrapped all over Gerald Riggs? Try number 56, Lawrence Taylor. This is what really killed the Redskins last year, too, that turnover ratio. They were worst in the league. A minus 24? Yep, incredible. Ricky Pettibone, the defensive coordinator. His unit out there now as the Giants take over at their own eight-yard line. And it's Otis Anderson, who finds no room. He can't turn the corner, and he's taken down by Monty Coleman and Charles Mann. I'll tell you, on a hot night, and it is hot, very humid, players are boarding on exhaustion, and not just Lawrence Taylor. There's incredible intensity being displayed by both of these ball clubs. Great rivalry between the two of them. It's a classic pro football game, indeed it is. Fans in September, the next time we're back here in November, you'll see the heaters along the sideline. I like that fan strategically placed to keep the equipment man cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even aimed at the bench. Yeah, but he plugs in the fan. Second and 11. Nice guy. Manual in motion. Keep it on the ground. And moving through the hole is Anderson to the 20-yard line. And Otis Jerome, O.J. Anderson. And Woody Hayes, if he was still with us, would have appreciated the way... Otis Anderson took care of the football. Yeah, but Dan, defensively for the Redskins, a big man is missing that so often would have been all over that. And I'm talking about Dave Butts. And the Redskins have had a hard time replacing Dave Butts as we look at Anderson exploited. Dean Hamill did not report to camp. They traded him to Dallas. Curtis Maxey didn't work out there. Tracy Rocker didn't work out there. And they're using a defensive end, Marcus Cook at defensive left tackle. Eventually, they hope that Rocker will work out. He's the rookie from Auburn. Anderson again swings to the outside. Picks up five yards. Stopped there by Brian Davis. And O.J. Anderson getting up and telling Brian Davis, you better come up with a harder hit than that if you want to phase me. Funny thing about Anderson, he shows up at training camp last year and some rookie free agent who knows him only by Otis Anderson says to him, are you related to O.J. Anderson, the former Cardinal? He says, I am O.J. Anderson. He said, I thought you retired. Well, what's Bill Parcells calling him? Elvis? <laughs> he said, I've resurrected him from the dead. And in a sense, he has. He's given him the opportunity, but give Anderson credit. He has stayed active, and he has been impressive for an older running back. 
Second and five from the 25-yard line. And nothing doing there. Right in the middle is Dexter Manley stopping him for no game. You know, there are an awful lot of good football players on the field tonight. We're going to do some games throughout the course of this Monday night season of ours where there aren't as many high-quality, high-powered athletes on the field as we have here tonight. Lots and lots of good-looking talent. And they're, some of them, Dan, have been around for a while, and now you've been watching them develop. Manly, he's been around, what, nine years? You've got Manly on the other side, seven years. They've played in three Super Bowls. Third down, four. Giants from the 26-yard line. It's Moad in motion. And here come the Redskins, but they pick up the blitz. They take Marshall out of the play, and Sims is going to scramble and try to get the first down, and out of bounds he goes at the 35, and he has it. What a hustle by Dexter Manley. He was the man who helped flush Sims out of the pocket, and he was also the one that chased him out of bounds, 30 yards away. But I'll tell you what else happens, Frank. On pass rushing, everyone has to honor their lanes. Watch Wilbur Marshall go upfield, but watch Dexter come up and then make a decision to work back to the inside and watch Phil Sims split the seam. Dexter Manley has got to stay there, stay at home. Watch him move to the inside, and there's where Phil Sims gets his alley, and that's how he picks up the first down. You've got to honor your lanes in rushing the passer. That time, Dexter Manley gambled and got burned. Three tight ends. That's Howard Cross, a rookie tight end in motion. And on first down, it's Anderson out to the 36 with 7.55 to play. Third quarter. The Giants are on top by a score of 14 to 3. The Giants breaking on top early, leading 14 to nothing. 62 yard touchdown reception by the rookie Dave Meggett after Odessa Turner had initially put the Giants on the board. Low Miller with a field goal late in the second quarter. Lawrence Taylor a big first half and the Giants who come in as four point dogs lead by 11. And now it's Richie Pettibone and the Redskins doing a little substituting. Fred Stokes number 60 is in for Manley right defensive end. Second and eight. Anderson Tripped up behind the line by Monty Coleman in his 11th year out of Central Arkansas. And another fight. scuffle at the 42. William Roberts and Alvin Walton. Walton doesn't get into too many skirmishes, does he? It's tough to find the football on the field without <laughs> Alvin Walton there somewhere. Right. It's only a one-play breather for Dexter. Now with the obvious passing down, third and long. That'll be interesting, too, to see if the Giants will try to lock up Odessa Turner one-on-one. Redskins will be well advised to provide a little double coverage on number 83. It goes to your left as you look down from up above. From the gun on third down and eight, Ingram in motion. Sims, time to set up, and then knocked down at the 42-yard line by A.J. Johnson, the rookie. Baker, the intended receiver. That saved the Giants' first down. Good play, Johnson. Boy, I want to see how he gets a hand on this ball because Baker's out in front of him. You look at that and you say that's a completion. Wow. Yeah, Perfect Baker, timing. Baker turned his head. He thought he had that ball and was ready to run with it. Well, if you'd have freeze-framed right there and said, what are the odds of this not being a completion, they would have been 1 in 10. Some play by A.J. Johnson. Joe Howard to accept the kick off the foot of Landetta. Short kick, but it takes a great bounce for the Giants. Oh, and Howard uh, better hope that he didn't touch the football because it's dead at the three-yard line. Boy, he better be right. Ooh. Oh, and we've got Alvin Walton going again, and there goes the flag up at the 35. Alvin Walton, that's Barry Wilburn. The guy's saying, I'm not involved, but it was originally Alvin Walton. Meanwhile, they are marking the ball inside the five, so apparently they are saying that Howard did not touch that ball. Which, Which, of course, is difficult. a mistake by Howard. He's got to handle that punt. Mm -hmm. He's got to handle that punt. Yep. If he... Personal foul on the kicker. Personal foul on the receivers. After the play, play is offset. First down. Well, that means absolutely nothing. That doesn't impact the play whatsoever. But the mistake by Joe Howard of not handling the ball costs the Redskins a lot of field position. They have to start <laughs> huddled in their own end zone. Will he remember that? Left in the third. Off the play fade. 
throws, and it's tipped, and it's incomplete. Off the hands of Gary Clark over the middle. A oh, great call by the Redskins, a perfectly executed pattern by Clark. It's just a high throw from Rippon. Can I tell you how receivers hate that high pass coming over the middle? Fortunately, that was too high to even go after. Well, oh, just a great call and well executed by the Redskins. A little late face mask action by Terry Kennard inadvertently. I'll tell you, that's where you really get the bruising, though, oh. going up for it. Down 14 to 3. That's a tough one to miss. Second and 10. And on the ground, they're trying to give them some breathing room, taking the ball out to the seven yard line with 6 10 to play. In the third, Gerald Riggs setting up a third down, call it seven. I don't know that there's ever been a linebacker that pursues flat down the line of scrimmage better than Lawrence Taylor. And a good look, he's unblocked, but yet on nothing but desire, runs flat down the line of scrimmage and makes the tackle only a two-yard gain. Dan, would you say that is why we are not seeing a lot of the counter gap? Ordinarily, the Redskins will run a 10, 12 times a ball game, but with not only Taylor, but Banks on the other side. I mean, they have great speed, and they catch it from behind. Well, the only way I would run that play was uh, I would run it right at Lawrence Taylor, not away from him. Third and seven from the Redskins seven. And Rippon to the near side to Clark. He makes the catch at the 28, spins away from Sheldon White, taken down at the 34-yard line by Myron Guyton. Man, I love a wide receiver that just doesn't take the automatic step out of bounds after making a catch and say, well, this will be real pretty. I'll make the catch and won't even get hit. God, I love a guy that'll go back inside and try to pick up some yardage and take a hit. They're tough guys. Gary Clark, Ricky Sanders, and Art Muck, and pretty good throw by Rippon to get it out there. But here's what Dan is talking about. A lot of receivers would have taken that right out of bounds. Puts the brakes on, gets another four or five yards out of it. And barely put the brakes on. He was extremely close to being out of bounds, but what an effort by Clark. 28-yard pickup, first down, 35, reverse. Art Monk swinging to the outside, and Williams can't take him down, but he slows him down, and, and Monk is dropped at the 36-yard line by Taylor. And cast your Pro Bowl ballots right now for Lawrence Taylor. I mean, he, he blows the play initially by being there and forcing the ball all the way towards the sidelines, and then he comes back. Watch this. Just by where he is, getting up, forcing it to the sidelines, he's strung out the play, and then by staying on his feet and getting into a pursuit angle, he ends up making the tackle on Art Monk. I'm sorry. Hey, you run out of superlatives, don't you? Yeah, move to the head of the class. <laughs> he's already there. You've got an A for the semester already. Second and nine from the 36-yard line. Monk catches it at the 40, looks for the first down, but comes up short. Carl Banks stops him at the 44, and the Skins will have it third and one with under four minutes to play in the third period. Good heady read by Monk. Giants come with the blitz. He has an up pattern called, and he pulls it up and is wide open. You know, I guess we run the risk of, of suffering the wrath of some people who are going to say that we're favoring the Giants, that we're talking about Lawrence Taylor this, Lawrence Taylor that. Folks, I, I hope that you have the know-how, the know, the know where we're all, wherever I'm trying to say to where realize. Where we're all, where we're all. What you're seeing, you're seeing greatness. Well, the wherewithal for Riggs here is a first down on a super effort after the 48-yard line, a super effort to pick up those extra couple of yards, again, finishing off the play as Gerald and Washington keeps the drive going. I'm going to try that again, Dan. Well, he was he was so good. <laughs> I even was at a loss for words, and that doesn't happen very often. He was a hoss and a half, right? <laughs> he was a hoss and a half. Oh, some real helmet painting going on tonight. <laughs> at the 48. Right, I'm going to go get a hot dog. All right. <laughs> the three at halftime weren't enough. <laughs> Here's Riggs across the 50 to the 49 of the Giants. Uh, I'm going to take a couple plays off. I've lost my confidence. <laughs> Riggs closing in on 100 yards. And again, Gerald out of Arizona State. All of those years in Atlanta. He was the workforce there. And then the Falcons found John Settle, who emerged last year. Riggs became expendable, and off he went for a draft choice. Atlanta gets Washington's number one next season. From the Goodyear blimp, looking down into RFK on second down, called at six. 
Jamie Morris is the setback. The play fake is to him. And going deep Look and out, out in front is Ricky Sears. He makes the catch for the touchdown. Ran right by Mark Collins. And the Redskins are out on the field. New ball game. Boy, the play action just froze the giant secondary. It's the old counter gap play again. Remember how well they ran it in the first half, only they threw it to Donnie Warren coming across underneath. This time it's the same action, only it's Ricky Sanders on a fly pattern down the middle. Mark caught looking at the play action. Kennard couldn't get over there from the free safety. And a great pass by Rippon. He just could not overthrow Ricky Sanders. He unloaded it just about as far as he could throw it. Lomiller's extra point is good. Washington has now scored a touchdown in 51 consecutive games. Longest such streak in the NFL. And it is a brand new ball game. 14 to 10. Giants. Stadium erupting. Redskins. On a long drive and a key catch by Gary Clark earlier in the drive, culminating in a Ricky Sanders touchdown reception, down by four. This is the rookie Meggett from the five-yard line who scored the touchdown on the pass reception in the first half, and he Whoa. takes it back out to the 27. And look at him hang that ball out there in one hand. Stopped by Howard, timeout with 147 to go in the third. Sanders, seven receptions of 40-plus yards last year. Tonight, he has caught five. He's averaging 26.6. The Giants, meanwhile, as a team, have completed only six passes tonight. Only one more than Sanders. From the 27-yard line, Phil Sims up by four. Down he goes. Darrell Grant and Dexter Manley. As Sims took the short drop, nobody was open and takes the sack. Good coverage by Brian Davis, the left cornerback for the Redskins. Sims looked up. He wanted to go to Odessa Turner. Davis was right with him. And taking the sack is a very descriptive term. Phil Sims, being the veteran quarterback that he is, realizes that a short sack like that is not the end of the world. He's not going to force the football. They still have the lead, 14 to 10. He'll just fall down, eat it, and play for the next down. And has for a number of years. Second down and 14 from the 23. Manual in motion. He hasn't caught a pass tonight. And Sims for Moat, who makes the catch at the 50 and is down at the 46 of Washington. Todd Bowles covering. Moat, a good receiving tight end. Hurt his knee badly three years ago, but before that, had shown the good hands. They've used him primarily as a blocker, but they got the matchup. It was Moat against Todd Bowles. Sims with a good pass. Bowles is a free safety. He ordinarily doesn't get himself locked up one-on-one. -on -one. And when it is, it's going to be a tight end, but this is a good pass-receiving tight end. No, but as a free safety, he's got the speed where you wouldn't expect a tight end to get beyond him, and that's exactly what Moat did here. A fine catch, and he's the reason the Giants like the one-back set. Get Zeke Moat in the game. Waning seconds of the period on first down. Sims to the far side. Bavaro. That's the other one. Bill Parcells last year wanted that combination in there, and Bavaro was a holdout much of last year and was hurt throughout most of the season. He couldn't get them together. The year before that, Moat was just recovering from knee surgery. But in there together, they are great blockers, and both of them can take it deep. We'll talk about surgery. What, it was this January that Bavaro has, what, thumb surgery, mm -hmm. foot surgery, and shoulder surgery? Mm -hmm. All in the month of January. He played hurt last year, hobbled all around. And no team in the league has a better pair of tight ends good than the New York Giants. Yeah, you're right about that. 20-yard gain from the 25. It's Anderson for a six-yard pickup. He takes it to the 19. So the Giants mount a good, long, sustained drive as the third period comes to a climax. Charles Mann makes the tackle. The only scoring in the period, Washington. Rippon hitting Sanders to pull them to within four. And this stadium is a whole uh -huh. lot quieter than it was about two minutes ago. That's the way you quiet it down. You take it from your own territory. 
In about four plays and get inside the opposition's 20. End of the third. We'll be back after this message from our ABC station. Anniversary season, Monday night football, jam-packed RFK Stadium in D.C. A look up at the Goodyear blimp. And 15 minutes to go. We start the fourth quarter with the Giants on top, 14 to 10. And Bill Parcells has watched his team move to the Washington 19-yard line on a sustained drive. Bill sends the quarterback, and Lee Rusan is the sole setback here with Moat in motion. And Rusan carries and is stopped after a gain of two by Daryl Grant. So the Giants trying to answer Washington's long drive with one of their own, then move up on top by, well, at least seven, and hopefully for the Giants, 11. Statistics through three. Big numbers for the Redskins in the passing department. 96-yard drive for the last Redskins score accounts for a lot of that. Five turnovers between the two teams, not all that uncommon on the very first game of the season, but... Boy, the three turnovers by the Redskins have really cost them some serious points on the scoreboard. From the 17 on third and a couple, it's Anderson fighting his way for what should be a first down. Otis Anderson again through the middle of the Washington line, and that would figure strong at the end and suspect in the interior. Well, we have reached the stage of a ball game here in the opener where... Much like a heavyweight fight when you go into that 10th or 11th round, you're looking at where conditioning, stamina, and desire come into play right now. Because these are two tired teams. Mm -hmm. They're going to have to, one of these teams is going to win this game on guts. Now we could get that confirmed by Alex Wallow. All right, we've got to bring him in if this is a heavyweight Hard fight. Hard by our side of the booth here. Oh, pugilism is in my blood now. Yeah, I can now. tell. This is Anderson. Big hole and through the middle. The end Touchdown. Otis Anderson, a man who shows up in camp wondering if he has a job. And this is nothing more than straightaway blocking. Give Bart Oates the center and give the right guard, Damian Johnson, a tremendous assist. No trap, just straight ahead blocking on the part of the two of them. And it was a beautiful hole for Otis Anderson. He's having quite a night. I want you to take a look at this thing. We're going to look at it from high above after this kick, and you're going to see some fine one-on-one -on -one straight ahead drive blocking by the New York Giants. Allegre to the point after, it's perfect and the Giants are back up on top by 11. Here's how you split the two defensive tackles. Starts with a big block from the center right here, Bart Oates, walls to the inside. Here's Damian Johnson, there's the wall to the outside. Otis Anderson, a clear shot right between the two. Beautiful blocking at the point of attack. Anderson makes the right cut. And Todd Bowles misses a tackle at the four. And the big man finds the zone. Five-yard touchdown drive that ended in a touchdown pass to Sanders. And the Giants counter with a 73-yard drive. They lead by 11. And the kick is fielded at the 11-yard line by A.J. Johnson, who has some room to the outside. And then it's caught from behind out at the 31-yard line by Greg Jackson. Well, on Saturday, as good as it gets in the early season... Bo Schembeck. Mm -hmm. I mean, who made that decision to mm -hmm. just show the Notre Dame coach rather than the Michigan coach? Bavaro. The talk show circuit. From the 34-yard line, the Redskins begin this drive, and on first down... It's Mark Griffin, and open over the middle and making the catch at the 47 is Jimmy Johnson. He's a 12th round draft choice. They had two in the 12th, Johnson and Joe Mickles, who also made the team, but just underwent arthroscopic surgery, and nobody is as good as Bobby Bethard, who quit as the general manager in April, is shopping in those discount stores at draft time and coming up with the gyms. Well, the Redskins are just hurting the Giants on that one series. That's the same play that Ricky Sanders caught the long touchdown catch. Worked well in the first half to Don Warren. That time Johnson's wide open. New York hasn't yet defensed that play. From the 47-yard line, Riggs into Giant territory. Brought down at the 42. Very close to a first down. Terry Kennard makes the tackle, and it depends on the spot on a 10-yard pickup. Now, as far as the Redskins are concerned, in this decade... 
overall in the NFL, when teams have trailed after three quarters, they've won only 17% of the games, less than one of five. But the Redskins, seven times in this decade, have come back to beat the Giants when they trailed after three. So Gibbs and his team, they've seen it before. Mounting comeback after comeback. The first down from the 43, Clark inside the 30 and Gary to the 22-yard line. Stopped by Perry Williams. What Gary Clark can do so well, along with Ricky Sanders, Art Monk, they're good runners after they catch the football. Simple little four-yard hitch. You get the ball to him, and Perry Williams knows all about Gary Sanders. He has to play it very cautiously. He does get the tackle, but not until Clark has picked up an additional seven or eight yards. Well, a four-yard hitch is a pretty effective pattern when the corner is playing 12 yards off. Williams giving an awful lot of cushion to Gary Clark. First and ten from the 22. Biner goes in motion, and again it is Riggs taking it to the 17-yard line for a gain of five. Eleven minutes to go. Boy, how much respect do the Redskins have for Lawrence Taylor? Ernest Spiner goes in motion with no other responsibility than to get in the way of Lawrence Taylor, who is slow in getting up. Ernest Spiner goes in motion away from the play, and it's his responsibility just to get out there and bump on Lawrence Taylor, keep him out. Don Warren, at the same time, is in his face. But yet, who ends up making the tackle? Lawrence Taylor. Washington last year, 25th in the league in rushing. They got Riggs, and nobody else except Monk has carried the ball. Monk on a reverse. Shades of John Riggins, though. That's exactly how they used him 25, 30, 35 times a game. Second and five, Washington at the Giants' 17-yard line. Take to Riggs. Rippin throwing to the seven-yard line, and the catch is made there by Ricky Sanders. And a first and goal. Sanders with a good move, had himself covered in the end zone. Mark Collins, good coverage on him. Out comes Rippin. Sanders breaks it back to give his quarterback an angle, and Rippin was there. Now watch Sanders. Good coverage by Collins. Now he sees Rippin, too. Rippin's rolling out. Now look at Sanders. He doesn't just stand there. He gives his quarterback an angle and gets... The yardage inside the 10, first down Redskins. And I tell you what, guys, it's that same counter play action again. This series is just undefensible by the Giants. They can't get they can't get a hold of it. You know, they're not running off it, Dan. They're throwing off it. They run here with Riggs on first and goal. Nothing doing. He's wrapped up by Taylor. And Diasi also coming in from the backside. Under 10 minutes now to play. You're really right, Frank. The Redskins will tell you they like to run that counter gap series. 10 or 12 times a ball game. I don't remember them running at more than maybe three or four so far, but at least four times that I can think of, they've run the play action off of it, completed every one of them, and a whole bunch of different people. Ricky Sanders, Gary Clark, Jimmy Johnson, and Don Warren. Each one of those guys has been the recipient of a rip and pass off the same play action. You could say the Giants are conditioned to seeing it, and they react so totally to the run that they let the pass get completed. Second and goal. Sanders in motion to Clark's side. Griffin looks that way, hits Biner at the six, and he is pushed back by Mark Collins. It'll be third and goal. Biner, the other acquisition that we have not seen that much of tonight, was the leading receiver for the Browns a year ago. He can do it all. You can play him as a running back. You can play him as a wide receiver. The motion back anywhere you want to put him. He can do a lot of things, and I think, quite frankly, the Redskins were stunned when they were able to get him for Mike Oliphant, mm -hmm. a third-round draft pick of a year ago, and certainly not statistically an Ernest Viner. Tough call here for the Redskins on third and goal, but notice three receivers to the far side of the field. The posse, but now they bring Sanders back to the left. Monk and Clark to the right. Griffin, good protection over the middle. Monk, touchdown. The first ever touchdown from Monk against the Giants. That is amazing. He's had 39 career touchdowns. How many games has he played against the Giants over his career? So many. Yeah. Our 
Derek Davis. Monk is sometimes, Frank, more like a tight end than he is a wide receiver. You talk about a receiver that goes into the middle. That time, that time he runs into the middle and makes contact and runs right into a middle linebacker. I think it's Diossi of the Giants. Spins off and makes the reception. I mean, there just aren't many wide receivers that will go in there and tangle with a middle linebacker. Redskins have three of them will do that. Low Miller puts it through. So three successive scoring drives, long ones, Washington, then New York, now Washington again. Art Monk came into the league in 1980 and finally scores against the Giants in 89. What a mismatch, Monk against the Aussie. And this one has the makings of being yet another chapter in a tradition-filled, dramatic finish type of rivalry between these two teams. The Giants down by four with Megat. The Giants up by four as Megat takes it back to the 30 and a penalty flag is down. The Giants on top 21 to 17 and Megat is tackled by Minuski and a marker is down. Redskins indicating it's against New York. And hand tack. Holding. Number 22 on the return. 10 yard penalty. It will be first down. Concurs. If the Redskin fans are in midseason form, they're going to make enough noise to make it hmm. tough on Phil Simms. 8.06 to play. Oh, catch. Moves him into the top 10. On the left, one through five. Steve Largent, all-time reception leader. You see Charlie Taylor third. That's the Redskin record. And on the right, six through 11 now. Harold Jackson bumped out of the 10th spot by Art Monk tonight, who's now caught 580 passes in his career. 10th year out of Syracuse. The Giants at the 21-yard line. First and 10, 8.06 to go. 21 to 17, New York. Nothing in the middle for Anderson. RFT very much alive after a first half in which the Redskins didn't do much. Giants led 14 to nothing. It was 14 to three at the half, but Washington has mounted two long drives, and the Giants mounted one of their own in between. All resulting in touchdowns. Second and ten. Sims has it picked off by Coleman. He's Monty in. Coleman, touchdown Redskins. to hit Mark Favaro, but Monty Coleman plays a pass that was just not where Bavaro was. Some miscommunication between Bavaro and Phil Sims. Bavaro stopped. Sims throws it right to Monty Coleman, who one-hands it for a touchdown. We talked at the beginning of the game why Monty Coleman is in this game. Ordinarily, they go with Raven Caldwell. He's tough against the run, but Monty Coleman for 11 years has been tough against the pass and that was a not only well played but a, a brilliant interception Monty Coleman does what he's out there to do gets the touchdown and puts the Redskins on top and here's how what it feels like when you throw the interception in the shadow of your own goal post Coleman he last scored a touchdown on a return in 1984 Washington has the lead for the first time tonight. Low Miller puts it in the air and it comes down to the eight yard line into the hands of Megan. And Low Miller makes the tackle out at the 32. One more time, Pavaro, for some reason, as Dan pointed out a moment ago, pulled up on it. And Monty Coleman with a great effort. 
just to even get to the ball. He one hands it, sprints into the end zone. And you saw that meter registering about 100. I'm not sure whether that was the decibel count or the Richter scale. I mean, this place was rocking. And still is. First and 10. Giants at the 32. 7-12 to play. Ten. First down. Loses the ball, but no. No fumble. Dead at the 44. Giants ball. Boy, and you admire Phil Sims and his attitude, but not a real smart play. That's a, an obvious situation where a quarterback ought to go into his hook slide. This is the first game of a very long season, and Phil Slim, Sims, rather than hook slide, look at this, takes on two Washington Redskins. Wilbur Marshall almost Whoa. puts him away. Good call by the official. Sims obviously on the ground, and the ground causing the fumble, but a risky, risky play by Phil Sims. First and 10 at the 44-yard line. But a gutsy play. You got to like it. Yep. That was manual in motion. Sim stepping up and throwing, looking for manual, and overshoots him at the 40-yard line. Ooh, and, and here the flag is down. Might have been lineman downfield. Sims, William Roberts, I think, was way downfield, Frank. Sims made it look like he was going to run. Roberts took off the leading. Sims pulled up. And they're going to draw very severe penalty. Well, the problem with that That's is a tough one. you can't blame the lineman. He thinks his quarterback is Absolutely. going to run. He's going downfield to try to protect him, and then the quarterback pulls Ineligible. it. Offense, number 66 downfield, 10-yard penalty. Repeat the down, first down. William Roberts is the left guard, and he's right here. Watch him as he blocks at the line. When he feels that Sims is going to break and go downfield, you can't blame him. He's doing his job. When Phil breaks out right here, all his linemen thinks he's going to run. There goes Roberts downfield. Hey, Phil Sims threw him a curveball. First and 20 from the 34-yard line. And Sims going deep for Turner, but it has and then Turner comes back to make the catch at the 21-yard line. And that's what you can do when your receiver is 6 feet 3 inches tall and Brian Davis, the corner, at 6'2". He's in the ballpark height-wise, but it's Turner all the way. And Dan, he's a superb oh. athlete. He timed that out well, again, beautifully. Frank, we've seen this before. It's a short ball. This ball is just totally up for grabs. Both these guys are going to come to a complete stop, basically before they jump at this thing. Really a poor throw in the part of Sims if he's trying to get the sprint, but he's got the athletic <laughs> Turner in. They weren't even close to it, and Turner, the key to that is timing it out, so at the height of your leap, you meet the ball, and that's exactly what Turner did. Well, I'll tell you who else. Todd Bowles, the safety, should have been in on that play. Instead, he's falling backwards. 44-yard gain. Anderson to the outside. Wrestle down at the 15 by Alvin Walton. Gain of close to seven. Five and a half minutes to go. No, that's the type of pass you give a lot of credit to Odessa Turner for bringing that thing down. But in reality, you've got Brian Davis and you've got Todd Bowles, a pair of Washington defensive backs right there, and they can't prevent it. Clock ticking down, 5-10 remaining, fourth quarter, second and three, Giants at the Redskins 15. Redskins on top, 24-21. That's Howard Cross, the rookie in motion. O.J. Anderson protects the ball and picks up only a yard, setting up a key third and two now. Wilbur Marshall makes the tackle. A field goal, 24-21, will not get the lead back. You've got to think touchdown. You have to think two downs from here. Richie Pettibone, the defensive coordinator of the Washington Redskins, trying to haul out anything he can pull out of his bag of tricks. Well, the Giants are thinking they'll run it on third, they'll run it on fourth. Good thing to do against the sure run, almost, is to blitz it. Third and a long two, and Anderson is able to burrow forward and get to the 11-yard line, and that will be a first down. What about Otis Anderson and his ability to consistently turn a third and short into a first mm -hmm. down? This guy's batting 1,000. As he did all of last year. He was perfect last year, and he's been perfect so far this game. Has he, has he not? 
I don't. I can't remember him missing at all tonight. But he's going to play this game for the 30-something people. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> Put him in our Tuesday night lineup. Elvis Anderson is alive and well, and he has not left the stadium <laughs> no, no. tonight. Not yet. First and ten. They can get a first down without getting a touchdown. Anderson picks up uh, about a yard and a half. Marshall makes the tackle. 3-20. Overtime. Overtime. Otis really <laughs> slow getting up now. And hot night. Lances over to the bench. Parcells looks away, and he gets back into the huddle. <laughs> you know him well, Dan. It's tough. Hey, when you're that tired, good luck making eye contact with a oh. coach. No coach wants to look out and make eye contact with a player who's that tired. And don't read lips around her either. Yeah. Second and eight. Eight for a first, eight and a half for a touchdown. Watch out for Moat. And the pass in that direction. But Monty Coleman really forced the issue and leveled Sims in the process. Hey, Monty Coleman has been all over this field tonight. That time in on the blitz. He's been tremendous as a pass defender, breaking up a couple of pass plays, forcing Sims to go where he doesn't want to go. Well, credit uh, that time Daryl Green and Alvin Walton. They sandwiched Moat. Phil Sims had nowhere to go. He wisely tossed it. Meanwhile, Lionel Manuel was jumping up and down on the goal line. He was open. Third and eight. They haven't gotten the ball to Manuel tonight. He's split to the bottom of the screen, and that's Turner on top. Parthen and Anderson behind Sims. Third and eight. Sims pressured by man, sacked by man. And you can give that sack to man, but also give it to Daryl Green. Phil Sims had locked up. He wanted to go to Manuel. Manuel came down, broke it in, broke it outside. Green didn't buy any of it. Super coverage on the part of Daryl Green. He did some job. Manuel runs very precise routes, particularly when you're down in close. And Sims had counted on him, looked at him, and by the time he pulled that ball down, man was there. Raul Alegre, a 32-yard field goal attempt. He missed the 42-yarder earlier. Hooked it badly. Hostetler to hold. This one, though, is right through the uprights. And with a clock stop now, we have 2.17 to play. Each team with its full complement of timeouts remaining. And the game is tied at 24-24. Well, great game to open things up. And we cannot let this evening pass without letting you know and remember you heard it here first because we paid a lot for uh -huh. the rights we had to wrest the rights away from Regis Philbin <laughs> in March Frank and Kathy Lee Gifford will be the proud parents of a newborn baby so Frank will go from knowing all about the two minute warning to the two o'clock feeding I don't want Way any color go, commentary on this <laughs> I, I, I tried another puppy. <laughs> <laughs> Kathy Lee, congratulations, Frank. Congratulations. Uh, thank you, my this man. This is thank one way to announce it, isn't yep. it? That's how to do it. What, about 40, 50 million? Yep. Uh, you'll be answering the phone. It'll be a, a long girl. Send away. everything in pink. Uh -huh. And if it's a boy, about 18, 19, 20 years from now, another New York Giant. Late March. Congratulations to both of them. Thank you. La da 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 da. How did that happen? Da 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 da. No, I mean how did this happen? <laughs> Shut up, Frank. <laughs> Remember, Dan likes white owls. Don't forget. Yeah. Allegra to kick off at the nine-yard line. A.J. Johnson takes it and runs it back out to the 29. Again, the teams each with all of their timeouts left, and the ball at the. 28-yard line. Mark Rippon coming back into the game. And again, Rippon making only the seventh start of his career, playing yes. in only the tenth game of his career. I really admire what he's done tonight. He was a little bit erratic in the first half. He threw a, a mindless interception right before the first half that could have really caused a problem. The Giants Allegre missed the field goal, but he came right back ripping it, tossing it, strong arm, <laughs> and getting a lot of support from those outside guys. Sanders, Clark, and late in the game, Monk. What a fine line he has to walk here, though. He can't be too aggressive, take too many chances. 
forcing it into coverage. And that's being very conservative. Good Riggs call. Picks up six. He takes it to the 35, and we come to the two-minute warning. That's It'll a good be call. Second and four for Washington. When we come back. Two minutes to go. What a way to open the 20th season of Monday Night Football. 24-24. Uh, we showed you the great runs in the history of Monday Night Football at halftime. And those of you who vote, it costs you 95 cents a call. The number is right there at the bottom. And Tony Dorsett's run. The favorite of more than half the uh, callers into this I point. I can't believe that William Perry is doing so poorly. I mean, he <laughs> struck a blow for linemen everywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, th this is very, very disappointing that he's running last. Well, he's, he's only one percentage point behind Earl Campbell, though. <laughs> yeah, who's for Next best worth. thing to a lineman. Yeah. Two minutes to go. Here we go. Second down and four. Washington at the 35-yard line. And this is Riggs for a gain of a couple. He uh, further advances the ball another couple of the yards, but his knee was down at the 37. Meanwhile, unfinished business to baseball. Let's take a look at the National League. Cubs win it over Montreal today. The Mets win 5-2, to two, but the Cardinals lose, and the Cubs now lead St. Louis by 3.5. The other score is on the right. And in the American League tonight, Baltimore commencing an 11-game homestand, their final home games of the year. They beat Chicago 6-3. to three. Toronto was off tonight. Baltimore now trails by two in the AL East. And Kansas City winning. They are now four behind. Third down, two. Could be the play of the game here. Yep. Yeah. From the 37-yard line. Griffin. Going deep. Very deep and no good at the 11-yard line. It was Art Monk who'd gotten behind Kennard but can't hold on. Dan, I think Joe Gibbs might want that one back also. You got a third down and about less than two yards to go for the first down. You got Gerald Riggs. You gave a first and a second to bring him in to do just that, get you a first down and keep the clock moving. It would have been the, the safe call. But, you know, Joe Gibbs is not quite as conservative as a lot of people might be quick to label him. And, of course, you're right. That's a big chance he just took. Ralph Mosienko picked up last week from San Diego. It's a low kick. Takes a good Washington bounce. Back at the 11-yard line, it's Meggett picking it up, and he has nowhere to go with it but out of bounds. But a good play by Meggett. Mm -hmm. You don't want oh, to let yeah. that ball bounce. It might even have gotten inside the five-yard line. Again, a look at the third and two play. Zone coverage all the way by the New York Giants, their favorite coverage. And Monk looking one way, then another. This is a ball that he's trying his best to react to, and he almost ends up making mm. a catch out of it. Ooh, so close. Meanwhile, a flag down, and they're going to bring it back. I can't tell you how hard that is to do, looking one way, spinning around with the ball in the air for about 50 yards. You're totally disoriented. Monk made a good effort just to get there. Ineligible. Offense, number 91, downfield prior to the kick. Repeat the down, fourth down. And the Giants will, of course, take that because they don't want to start back at their own 15-yard line. It was Greg Minuski, formerly known as Minuski, but he wants to be known as Minuski now, <laughs> who was the man. That was a mystery flag as well. I didn't see it. Did any came of you? Came late. Yeah. To remind came all, late. all of our viewers out on the West Coast that our 20th anniversary show will follow immediately at the conclusion of our game here in Washington. The officials still aren't quite sure what they're doing here. They're going to have another conference. They're checking upstairs to see what the line of scrimmage was. That is a five-yard penalty. Well, what the rule book says. Well, it always has been. Hmm. So Mosienko to kick again. A lot of pressure on young Mr. Meggett. In that last play, Dan, he showed he's up to it, though. He took a real risk fielding that ball, but he made a good play out of it. Diane set up the return. This time a very good kick from the 12, Meggett. Out past the 20 and back to the 29-yard line. Tackled by Harbor. And the line of scrimmage is the 29 with 44 seconds to play. And all three timeouts remaining for New York. Well, that was a very nice change of affairs for the New York Giants. They pick up 
a little more than 15 yards on that exchange, so that worked out extremely well. Sims, one of the better quarterbacks around at using the two-minute drill to move the team down the field. He has the three timeouts. Three receivers, Ingram and Manuel split right. Turner to the left. Sims from the shotgun. Four-man Washington rush over the middle. Bavaro makes the catch and takes it to the 44-yard line. Giants don't want to spend a timeout here. Clock continuing to roll a half a minute. Allegri awaiting what figures to be a field goal attempt if the Giants can get that close. And this is Meggett on the inside handoff. He takes it to the 48th, and the Giants will spend their first timeout, stopping the clock with 22 seconds. Allegre's longest field goal, 55 yards, the longest of his career, when he was a rookie in 1983 with the Colts. He's kicking very well. I was watching him this past week out of the Giants training camp, and he has a set of crossbars that he kicks off the natural surface there that are about 10 feet apart. And he was drilling them through consistently from 40, 45 yards out. And they would have carried much further than that. Well, had from a lot of injury problems last year, but he's healthy. He's got a pretty good, pretty good leg. From a timeout standpoint, the Giants are in excellent, excellent shape. Figure they need approximately 15 yards to give Allegra a shot from the upper 40s. Well, here's where your tight ends are really a luxury. Three wide receiver set. Second and two and a low snap. Sims picks it up, throws over the middle, and at the 36-yard line, no. No catch. Ingram. 17 seconds now. He was there. and Phil Sims knows that he should have got it there. And another thing now, it's third down, but they still have to pick up the first third and two. Boy, Ingram is wide open, and that's just a low ball. That's down around his shoelaces. And Phil Sims really, as you said, Frank, would like that back. That's not the best angle to show you how low it was, but that ball was even, it didn't look catchable from up here in the press box. Third and two from the 48. Four-man rush. Bavaro gets taken down. And Eric flag. flags all over the joint. And Clarence, Clarence ball. Ball. Yeah, that's a penalty all the way. And here comes another flag in late. Or else that's the one that was on the ground kick. But Mark Bavaro trying to get off the round. Horse collared by Clarence Vaughn. Pass interference. Defense, number 31. First down. At the 41 with 14 seconds. Yeah, and there's no doubt about that at all. Clarence Vaughn from the very beginning all over Mark Bavaro. Now watch Bavaro's going to work back to the inside. Oh, but he gets him again. That's that's all the way. Giants called another timeout, but you see it one more time. Almost disrobed him. Yep, that's pass interference from the get-go. And, of course, Clarence Vaughn. Not facing the most pleasant of tasks, trying to keep up with Mark Bavaro. So it's a 41. You're still talking about a 58-yard field goal attempt at this point. And Giants with one timeout left. The game being played out on both sides. You saw Richie Pettibono, the defensive coordinator, a moment ago. That's Bill Parcells talking to Sims, talking upstairs. Giants had a bunch of speakers on their sidelines this past week, and they practiced for all their offensive drills with these huge rock concert speakers so that they would get used to tremendous sound. Were they playing crowd noise or music? A little of both. First and, and it was ten loud at the 41-yard line. Over the middle, hits Ingram, forward progress, loses the ball at the 38-yard line, but the play is whistled dead at the 35-yard line, meaning a 52-yard field goal attempt for Allegre if they so opt for that, and they will with a timeout taken and six seconds to play. One thing about kicking off the natural surface is a little tougher than it is off the artificial surface. We look once again at Ingram. Well, uh, whistle had blown there even though the ball comes loose on the hit. Keep in mind, that's the forward progress rule. The fumble actually occurred four yards back of where he made the catch before he was driven back towards the giant side of the field. 9 for 20. 
from 50 plus yards is Raul Alegre. Tonight he's made one from 32, missed one from 42. This one from 52. Hostetler is the holder. Keep in mind, Redskins have a new special teams coach, Wayne Severe. Diasi is the snapper, and Bavaro is the prayer. He got good. it. Good! Just barely good. What a finish, and this game's over. That took all six seconds. That's a long field goal. It took all six seconds, and it's a final play of the game. 52 yards. And by how much did it make it? A good yard. Raul Alegre. A stunned silence almost has mm. fallen over RFK. Two tough teams, both of them battled back, kept coming back at each other all night. And so the Giants, who beat Washington twice last season, start the 1989 season with a victory over their arch rivals in a road game. And <laughs> Allegri, I think that's mom. She would like to be if it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> Well, tough to script uh, a closer game than this one. We saw some all-star efforts from people like Lawrence Taylor and Jim Lachey and Art Monk, Mark Rippon, Phil Sims. Boy, a lot of good football here tonight. How about tonight. your old teammate? And how about Raul Alegre, Otis Anderson? Some good football here tonight in the season opener. George Allen-type football. George Allen type. Well, football. he just wandered into the booth. He, he <laughs> won right, a whole he bunch did. of them right here. <laughs> what a great shot that is. You think that's the highlight package? From that angle, it looks like it clears by maybe a yard to spare. And it just past 12. The clock strikes midnight for the Redskins and for the Giants. A happy flight home of victory in the very tough NFC East, which figures to be a three-way battle between the Giants, Washington, and Philadelphia. The Giants and Eagles win on opening day as the Giants beat Washington 27 to 24. <laughs> well, they pay him a lot of money, but it's still a game, and they're still kids. No emotion involved in this game, is there? <laughs> Well, a reminder, those of you on the West Coast, stay tuned now for our...